Hi everyone, my name is Gabby from Phil M and I'm excited to introduce the 20 year reunion with the cast of the iconic movie, The Debut. As a first gen Filipino American myself, I can relate to the challenges that a young film faces growing up. But you learn that you can follow your own dreams and still be proud of your Filipino roots and embrace your family's values. It's truly a movie for all generations. So I hope you enjoy all the laughs and the memories of the reunion. Hi, I'm Bernadette Malagtas and I play Rose Mercado in the debut. I just wanted to thank you all for joining us for the 20 year reunion with all of the filmmakers and also the cast members. It was amazing to hear which ones were our favorite scenes and how the movie was made. Wait, you missed it? Oh. Well, you're in luck because now you can watch a recap. Thank you guys for always supporting us. And who knows, this might not be the last time you see the Mercados. Hmm? Enjoy. So, thank you everybody for joining us. This is Neil Estrada of Phil Allen, Filipino Influential Leaders and Mentors. Today we're celebrating the 20 year reunion of the debut. And we have the cast and the creatives here with us all celebrating. My host today, Abdul Lam, is going to be Lyle Del Mundo, also president of SEPA. Lyle, go ahead and give him a give him a wave. Oh, by the mall. I guess. And we also have I just, ICI oh, sorry, sorry. Isaiah Dacio working double duty as a host as well. So once again, if you're not following Phil Am, go ahead and follow us at Phil Am Life on Twitch. Follow us on Facebook and follow us on YouTube. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. And today, once again, we are celebrating the 20 year reunion of the debut. So I'm going to throw out the first question over here. All right. It's been 20 years since you guys did the movie. Have you guys hung out at all? Like in the last five? Well, actually, let me backtrack. Okay, let me backtrack. Let me backtrack. Because it, it wouldn't do justice if we didn't do this. Why don't we go ahead and introduce everybody? I'm going to have the creatives introduce themselves first and then the cast. So Gene, go ahead if you want to introduce yourself and your, and, uh, your role in the film. Uh, my name is Dean. I uh, co-wrote with my partner, John Castro. Uh, I co-produced with uh, Patricia Janelsa and our producer, Lisa, who unfortunately can't be with us tonight. And I directed the film. Awesome. Get it? Yep. John, go ahead. Oh, um, John Castro. I co-wrote it with Gene back in the day. We started in like the 90s and now we're old. Um, <laughs> and we produced it along with Pat and uh, did the tour and everything. And here we are. Next. Awesome. Patricio? Uh, Patricio Janelsa. I am the uh, associate producer of the debut. Started out as an office intern and then I was the Lechon Boy Extra uh, reject. And then uh, I ended up uh, becoming the associate producer distributing the self-distribution tour that started today, March 16, 2001 in San Francisco. So uh, I'm also a filmmaker. Lumpia with a Vengeance is my film. So that's my plug. plug. <laughs> Thanks, Gene. And now let's go to the ladies. So let's go with uh, the actual debutante, Bernadette. <laughs> I'm Bernadette and cool. I played Rose Mercado and I was the 18 year old. So 20 years, wait, wait. I'm like Tita now, so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let's go to, uh, to, to Joy. You gotta unmute yourself, Joy. Yeah, can't have go. a Zoom meeting without you're on mute. I'm Joy. Um, I played Annabelle. And 20 years later, I'm in San Francisco. It's cool. Sweet. All right. Well, let's go now to the. Uh, the Bosco brothers, all on camera together. Yes. What up? What up? We're the, we're the Bosco brothers. Uh, I'm Dante. I'm Dorian. I'm Domingo. <laughs> I'm Dionysio. No, I'm drunk. I'm drunk. <laughs> Who'd you guys play? Ari, so Ari, Cargo. Cargo, Cargo, Cargo number one. Is here too, Ariana. <laughs> Ariana. Ariana. All right, so um, go ahead. Nothing. 
We were gonna say <laughs> what we did. Um, yeah. Well, we, I played Roman in the movie. <laughs> and I played Ben. I played Gustav. And I played Edwin. And you played Edwin. All right. Yeah. So now that the cast uh, and crew have all given uh, all of you here what they actually do, uh, we actually have two people who played themselves, believe it or not. So uh, Ice and E-Man, you guys can come on and let the people know what you guys did. Go ahead, E. What's up, everyone? DJ E-Man. I played myself. E-Man, I played uh, the DJ for the actual debut. And uh, I didn't have a speaking part. I spoke with my hands. Hey. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? My, my name is DJ Icy Ice, and I played DJ Icy Ice in the film. And I had two speaking lines in the film. <laughs> Do it! This, this is a man's world. <laughs> 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 yep. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick it off uh, with a question. I'm gonna go to the uh, original question over here. So it's been 20 years, right? I mean, that's quite some time, but time flew by really quick. Have you guys all kept in touch, like, let's say, in the last five years? When's the last time you guys all been in touch with each other? Mm. Mm. Aside from E-Man and Ice. But Patricio. I see well, these guys at, like, auditions. I've seen Derek, I've seen Joy, and I've seen Ariana all at auditions. I, I, I auditioned for the same parts as Joy and Bernadette. Obviously, obviously. <laughs> we see these guys I see auditions. these guys at my auditions as well, all the time. <laughs> actually, all. Joy Joy actually played my wife in a show, The Cleaner, but a wife with three kids. We had three kids, but we never saw each other. They didn't even have a man. You know? Um, you got your phone on you, right? I think I saw yeah. Bernadette okay. at Running Canyon one time. Hey, you know, you know what's funny is I, I saw Dion last week in a McDonald's commercial. <laughs> hey, I'm the new Ronald McDonald, baby. Hey. <laughs> Actually, I saw. We were familiar to each other, but they were Patricia recently. I yeah, you guys, both of you guys were there. I see Julian yeah. every now and then. We're supposed to I see, see him, man. Uh, I, I see him yeah. playing some basketball. We were at a right. and I, he was supposed to show up, but we, he, didn't make, he, didn't, he didn't make it that dinner. That, that I didn't show. make it to the dinner last week, but I think the last time I saw you guys was on the court. At the Staples Center, right? That's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. You know, I only ball at the Staples Center. I saw that. That's game. the only place I ball. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I, I saw Gene uh, about a couple of weeks ago. I had my first pandemic burrito, and uh, yeah, in what? like in yes. like a couple months, yeah. Uh -huh. You haven't had a, pan a, a burrito? In no, since yeah, it felt like a month ago, like a a, a legit one from a truck. Right. Yeah. Right. You're just a great chef yourself. You just never leave the house. That's how it is. <laughs> Eating my own shit. I'm tired. <laughs> hey, so we... I got a question for the creatives over here. Oh, by the way, by the way, we usually mm -hmm. do this go for it. Setting, but now we could cuss. Right? And... <laughs> <laughs> this is not our rate. It's our rated. It's our rated zone. We do these. We usually do this in a class for a teacher. Now uh, I think we should like loosen up a little, right? I think. Okay, I'm up there. Yeah, de All right, well, definitely, in that case, definitely I'm loosen up. We're gonna keep it fun. <laughs> uh, what we're gonna do too later on is we're gonna make sure that everybody here gets their shine and people get to know what's going on with you now, 20 years later. So if you guys got any projects, obviously shout that out. If you guys have something that you're proud of, like maybe you got some grown kids doing good things, shout that out as well. But I want to go and do a question for the. Uh, for the creatives over here. When you guys were actually filming this movie, I mean, what was your overall goal in getting this out? Did you guys have a, a vision for it? What, what was this uh, movie all about? You want to start, John? Uh, go, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, John and myself, and I mean, and this crosses generations, we, we all, we, John and myself particularly grew up in the 80s and um, you know we grew up on John Hughes movies and as as fun as John Hughes movies are and 80s teen movies were you never saw the way the country actually looked the way that our world actually appeared we never actually saw that in the movies that we watched and so uh, when I got to college I started to get very aware of the fact that uh, if you weren't represented 
then you might as well be invisible. You might as well not exist. And so I started working on this as my thesis project in film school. And uh, Derek? Derek was uh, in it. Derek was, was in the original thesis project, which was critical in terms of us getting our uh, grants and our initial funding to start the project. And then it just, from, the, from start to finish, took about 11 years from the, the beginning of the conception of the idea to actually releasing it um, worldwide so that people could see it all over the place. So, but, so it, was, it was always, in, in addition to an artistic endeavor, it was always a political endeavor as well, too. Because, you know, diversity has been an issue for generations. It, 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 it's actually got some currency now in our, in our world, um, which is great, long overdue. Um, but you know, we, people have been dealing with this issue for you know decades, and we're very fortunate to have been able to play a positive role um, in increasing diversity in film. Yeah, I mean, you know, twenty years later, I mean, there's still a huge impact that's out there. When I watched the movie, um, you know, we watched it in that theater, and I think uh, we watched it with you, Eman, and, and Bernadette. It was just you know, crazy to see everybody come together. This was a community event. So no matter what was going on, if you didn't get along with this group or whatnot, everyone was watching it. And the debut actually unified Filipino Americans throughout the US. I mean, everything you guys talked about here and portrayed in this movie was real life situations, right? You had like a dad, Dante as like a postman, right? A lot of Filipino American dads were postmen. Okay, you walk into a Filipino house, you see the, the chandelier with the shells, the big fork and spoon. Okay, you got the ants at Chismas. Um, you got the, the DJs, of course, and they're still here. You got the car crews. You got the gangbangers, right? Yeah, that was a choice, man. And, and Gusto, I got to say, uh, you know, I call, I'm calling you Gusto. Man, you actually played that role really well, brother. You look like a Thank real you. G, bro. Appreciate like a real it. G right there, man. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, no, we had things going on. I mean, how many of us here were actually in a, in a debut? I mean, I'm going to raise my hand. I was in there like probably like seven freaking times, right? Oh, you I mean, real life. Man. Yeah, you this was that. really, this was really That's going on. on. So for a lot of the Filipino American generation growing up in the 80s, 90s, and even early 2000s, we were actually living this life. And so for a lot of the Pinoys or first generation Filipinos, they might not understand what we were going through because that wasn't the culture, you know? So you guys have definitely uh, made a big impact so much so that people are still related to the movie. Now they think back on their, on their life, on, on how they grew up. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, anyways, well, we I grew up too. We grew up too. It's been 20 years. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, man. Just definitely. To what Gene was saying, um, when we wrote this, we kind of thought, this could be our only chance to put Filipinos in the can. We try to just stuff it as much as we can with content, even though it could be just touch it a little bit. Lisa was in there because um, we didn't know if we we're going to have a second or third chance to put Filipino issues on the big screen. <clears throat> so people can play, oh, it's very PCN, but how many people actually saw PCN? We're, we're, thinking very LA, California centric, right? There's like thousands, millions of Filipinos who've never been to a PCN, don't even know what a PCN is. And if you don't know what it is, there's a Filipino cultural night put on by college clubs, Filipino college clubs. So just the fact that people say it's two PCN is very narrow-minded um, from, from some people. But going back, yeah, Gene and I thought, like, let's put all this crap in there and just see what sticks and what hooks and I'm glad people got to enjoy it. I've actually never been to a debut in my life. Uh, I went to a lot of garage parties, though. Of course. And no, I never parties. did either. And we posted like... a lot of garage parties. Our family was like garage party kings. So with the 45 and the one red light bulb, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and a scroll bar. And a scroll bar. That's all you to the party. Yeah, you guys had everything in this movie, man. You guys had the barrel man, okay, which a lot of... Filipinos had when you walked in that was literally like the truth I think the only thing I didn't see there was like the last supper right or maybe sun kiss <laughs> or Sunday delight and um 
<laughs> yeah, and then the spam, but I think the spam was in the special features, right? That got cut off. So, yeah, no, that was uh, this this movie actually depicted, you know, pretty accurately what was going on in in Filipino American uh, lifestyle. But there were so many iconic scenes in the film. So I just want to ask you guys, and you guys can all chime in. Take your turn. Let me just do this, right? I don't want to pick on anybody, but but I will. <laughs> I'll pick on Bernadette first. So Bernadette, <laughs> in the film for you, what scene for you was the most, let's just say, memorable, almost iconic for you, Bernadette? For me, I think the most memorable, only because it was the first scene that I shot and it was the first scene of the movie that we shot. I don't know if Jean and John remember this. Um, they were supposed to do the car scene with uh, Brandon and Jason, but something went wrong with the car. So they're like, forget it. We're going to do yours and Dante's scene. You know, the you're just as brown as the rest of us, that scene, you know? And I was like, oh, oh we're going to go right to me. Okay, all right. And then so, you know, it was like, I was a little bit nervous and stuff like that. It, it was, this was kind of my first acting job. And I, Dante, of course, you know, Dante's like the epitome of Filipino actor like at that time that we were Stop like, it. Oh, okay. Stop Stop so Stop it. it was, uh, <laughs> and then so really it was that first scene. And then after we did it a couple of times, I just felt like we were doing something awesome yeah. for like, at least from my point of view. And I was happy to be like the first take of that with this whole journey. Um, I was like, oh, we're really doing it. You know, it's on, there's film in that camera. You know, so it was, it was, it was, that was my <laughs> it's not, it's not like, you know, a can, you know, no, that was the scene for me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, like you did a really good job, Bernadette, like uh, when, when Dante, you know, came back in, um, you know, after coming from the party and he actually got on the mic, you know, and said his little speech. Yeah. And you, I could really see the feeling come out of there. And I thought you did. Like, great that was really Thank good, actually. You. That was really good. Thank Anybody else want to chime in on a scene that they liked or? The fight scene. Yeah, dude, that was intense, the fight man. Scene was intense. <laughs> I love how you know every moment. <laughs> <laughs> that was intense, man. So go ahead. Let's hear about that fight scene. Yeah, go ahead. The fight scene was. Yeah, was... go for it. Well, tell him. Did someone get hit by a gun? No, yeah. first of all, he really hit me. Don't yeah, no, I, I really well, hit me I, I had in a, the face. When we oh, first shit. started rehearsing, <laughs> like, like, it was kept a little under the gun about what I was really going to do. But then when we got in the hallway and we were going to rehearse up, and we started shooting and the camera was live, I had to let them know, we're going to do this thing for real. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. <laughs> and 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 I went there and th and 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 you know I mean I don't know I, I think it was a very electrifying scene I think I read I remember the book the debut we and I read some stuff and Gene was talking about like we we caught like electricity in a bottle that night and I think we did I think all 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 of us in the scene together it was nearly the whole young cast well everyone older cast it was literally the whole cast in this one scene and uh you know, I think Dar said it off at the beginning about time we got into the scene. We were we really caught some Everybody electricity came in there. Came along to the right. Even, I mean, yeah. Faye's terrific in that. Yeah, so, Faye was amazing. Faye she was in it. She's, she's in it. Rude really boy. She's terrific. Rude, rude, rude boy. boy. Comrades. I mean, everybody's so Comrades. good. Comrades. 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 Great and and they it was I mean it, it turned you're right we kind of caught lightning in a bottle on that scene and it, it was Derek Derek told me if I could spit in his face. And so I did. I was gonna say, <laughs> method, I'm gonna method. On your brother, man. <laughs> hey, he Derek, said, Derek, you show that guy pretty right. hard, man. It looks like he actually really flew into the uh, into the wall over there. Like if you watch that scene where you ran when you ran in and you yeah. pushed him out of the way, it looks like he really flew into that door. Some of the good manners you have with other actors that aren't your brothers, you just kind of throw <laughs> out the window. Yeah. Brother. And right. also, you said, yeah, you can get physical. You know what I mean? We know, we know, we've been on stage with each other. We've hit each other in real life. Yeah. <laughs> so hitting each other on screen ain't no big deal. Ain't shit. Hey, real quick, <laughs> real quick. So Dante, how many takes 
did it take where you were getting slapped in the face with the, the double the double hands? Oh, that was oh, Dar. No, that was Oh, Dar. Dar. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. wasn't. I mean, she was in it. I don't think we did that many takes of that. Once, uh, once we the, the scene got into into motion, I mean, we were in it. We were in it, and 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 to Gene's credit, and 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 the DP, what was his name again? He was great too. That we had steady cam that day too, right, Gene? Like they were following. Like it, it, once they get, they were they were in and they caught everything and it was we didn't it was pretty and and she kept slapping and we kept and she and wasn't and it, the, it wasn't that many takes I don't think was it okay. I don't remember exactly <laughs> those are real face, was, man. face was pretty red in that scene though like Con considering, considering what we did it, it, it wasn't there wasn't very many takes uh, maybe no more than ten at the most. Right, yeah. because you, you can't you can't sustain that level of energy over that many takes. Well, at least you could, but it's very very hard. And yeah. so we we were lucky because you guys brought it right away from the very very beginning. I mean, you you were just there for take one, you know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I kind of knew. I mean, to me, that was for for my character and from my point of view as an actor, that was the film, like for me. And, and so I knew what that night it was really going to be. For me, that was gonna make or break the film. For me, as 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 a booster, so I I I went for it and it worked out. I mean, like doesn't want that's one of those times as an actor you like it it, it kind of I mean it was just, it was a success and you kind of feel like well I I can do this you know what I mean like like you just like we're we're technique and 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 your voice as a as a person comes through in a role in a way that that works and and that was like one of the first times as a young actor that that happened to me on the set. Do you mm. know what I mean? Where you actually, the vo like what's your, your intention as an artist? And then, cause a lot of times it doesn't come through. Like you do work or you do things that, that aren't as meaningful. You don't have the, the role doesn't fit what it is that you think that you're doing. But in that, it actually met the actual, all the technique that we had studied for all these years. And then the role that was written and, and my point of view as a man, as an artist, came was able to come through in that moment which was which was kind of special you know so yeah I mean, as a man it felt, it felt real man, you know what i mean yeah, i was wondering if you're actually in a real gang or not man <laughs> yeah hey um, <laughs> we, we 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 grew up we came up i mean cerritos we, we Hell yeah, cerritos cerritos. Little bit, and it was hardcore and cerritos with sts and mahalana and all those guys <laughs> and Derek was rolling with a bunch Sarzana. of those cats Sarzana. Sarzana. I wasn't rolling with us. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, with Bam. <laughs> you were saying with you. And, 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 and obviously we have, know, know. we have generations back in, in the Bay where they're hardcore. So that's been around our family. So I studied it. And then I just knew, like we knew, we know those guys. And we there was a take that I had on it. Those dudes are real and they have a point of view. And there's a reason why, why some of them go hard like that. Do you know what I mean? There's yep. a reason why right. it's not just it's not just a thing. It's, it's there's right. a reason. There's, there's something behind it, and that's kind of you know. So we had some of those people at Cerritos High. Derek, you were there. Yeah, right? that's what I'm saying. Derek for a history yeah. class or whatever. Derek was all trying to play like he was, was an OG veteran. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my sisters. Uh... <laughs> no, I'm not an OG. What? You I'm started like... your own. My sister's off camera. And she started her own game. Oh, nice. Listen, it was a click. That's what we were. It was a click. It was a click. Don't let them tell you nothing. This is Lolly. But, uh, uh, but I will. <laughs> but I think that the, the scene that really moved me was the car scene. <laughs> was the, the car scene with Derek, Derek Bosco and Brandon was in the And then um, talk about NASCAR. Jason, why you want to make your skin your car go faster anyway so. yeah i feel like that was really the thesis of the movie <laughs> the point yeah, of view yeah. like it was really yeah. a history it was a history lesson green that was Ariana that was the movie was, uh, thank you Ariana. Ariana. yeah you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> thank you thank you car girl hey what about for you uh dante what about for you i mean the movie <laughs> All these actors, remember Brothers is very special and uh, actor with Bernard. I actually was able to watch the movie recently and I had not seen it in a long time. Uh, things that I remember now thinking about the film. The basketball scene of me and Bernadette was just wonderful just because it was just like a brother and sister, you know, playing happen, basketball. Man. And it, it kind of set up our whole relationship. And then just being able to work with Tirso 
and Gina Alahar, and then also what about our Eddie Garcia, Eddie Gray. Work with these Filipino actors and got to like work with them and see them act. I, I mean, really, the, the the fight scene with me and Teresa in the bathroom. Uh, you know, me and Gene talk a lot about like, fighting. They don't want to fight. We want to stay. You know how they shot through the mirrors and um, and having that conversation with your dad. I think I know it was my first real big scene with Tirsone and feeling uh, the weight of, of him as an actor. And I guess oh, these are Filipino stars that I didn't necessarily grow up with, but then you you really start to realize I'm, I've acted with a lot of Hollywood stars, and these are stars I didn't grow up with, but the feeling of acting with them was the exact same because I mean. They have their veterans of the industry. They're great. They they had the hours on the set. They know how to handle the camera. They know how to handle dialogue. They know how to take moments, and you can just feel the weight of their stardom. And, and it really taught me a big lesson about about acting. They didn't even know they're teaching me lessons, and I'm just kind of like watching them work. And so those definitely stand out to me. And then beyond that, I mean, and I'm sure Bernadette and Joy can attest to this. And boys, of course, is my my biggest memories of the film is just like our hanging out after you know, after shooting the camaraderie that we had going to karaoke bars and seeing Tirso sing and just kind of like the camaraderie of that group and it all made it into the movie some, some way, somehow, you know? Yeah. Yep. Hey, uh, I got a question for you, Dante, uh, just to continue on, because this was kind of a legendary um, part in the scene. I think some guys even tried this out. The little uh, pick-me-up line with the hand, bro, like, <laughs> yeah. your hand, you know? <laughs> Did you try that in real life? Uh, I've never <laughs> tried that out, but shout, I don't know if Gene wrote that or, or yeah, John, who came up with that. Who wrote that? John or Gene? Who, who, I, who's on, who's I, I wrote that and I, I've tried it. Uh oh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> you still single? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, my, I'm not married, so I did not help. No. <laughs> hands were big enough. Hands were big enough. I've done it with some fans that over the years have been like, want to do the hand thing with me. I'm like, let's do it. You know, it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice. I think it's a nice move. My cousin was actually um, on a date, and she said some dude tried to do that on her. What? Cousin, so she was like, uh, "No, Phil." <laughs> What about for you? What about for you, Joy? The hand what, what? thing? Oh, I've closed many a time with the hand thing, yeah. The crazy <laughs> thing is, though, like, I have really long fingers, so I have a lot of guys <laughs> that, you know, like, they, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> speak, of, speak of hands, Joy, I got a question for you. Uh -oh. um, like, uh, <laughs> with that hand scene with, uh, with Dante, does he have I don't know if you recall, but does he have soft skin? Because that brother looks like he moisturizes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if it's just me. I'm, I'm just asking for a friend. You Sorry. Soft skin over the screen. Yeah, no. It, yeah, you have, uh, he didn't have rough hands. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, let's say your hands are so soft. I, I, it was the woman I said, hey, these are the hands of a child actor. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of calluses on those hands, those child actor hands. Yeah. So I mean, moisture a little bit long. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's uh, pretty interesting over here? Um, we had E-Man in the movie and Ice playing themselves, right? But believe it or not, E-Man actually had a stunt double and he had yeah. no stunts. So E-Man, why don't you tell everybody what, was, what that was all about? I did. Well, first off, it was, it was an honor and a blessing to be a part of this movie. Uh, but uh, at the time that we were filming, I had a pretty crazy schedule on the radio because at the time I was, you know, on, on radio on Power 106. And I had crazy schedules where I was on in the morning, I was on in the afternoon, and even on at night, depending on, on the days that we shot. And there was one day that I had to be at the radio station and they were filming my part at that same time. So my younger brother, my youngest brother, Mikey Mike, actually filled in for me. And if you look at one of the scenes in the movie, you'll see that it's my brother standing in for me as, as the DJ. Uh, but the, the schedule, my schedule, uh, unfortunately, at the time was pretty hectic. But uh, Gene and, and John and the crew were very flexible and, and worked with me to, to cover that, <laughs> that scene, uh, especially when I couldn't be there. But that was my stunt double, even though I didn't do any stunts. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. And then Ice Man, playing yourself, dude. I mean, did you have to practice, bro? I mean... You know, were you, 
Were, were you uh, nervous as an MC or what? Or, <laughs> that was just you doing legend parties all the time anyways. That was legend all day. <laughs> yeah, funny thing with that is, is that, uh, yeah, John wrote those lines and then just kind of tweaked it a little bit. But, but yeah, I mean, pretty much they were along the lines of us party rocking at any of the legend parties back in the day and, and even today too. So, yeah, man. Girls grab a guy, guy grab a girl. Let's get this party started. <laughs> That's how it goes, man. Nice. Can, off. Yeah. nice. Can we have a reunion at the uh, Variety Art Center? Man, I wish we could. That place is closed right now. <laughs> I want a real, I want a real reunion with dancing and drinking and everything. Hey, we'll we'll definitely make that happen out of this this uh, COVID stuff when everything opens up. Yep. And 20 years later, man, Ice's hair is still, still in place, man. Still the same, crazy. <laughs> Not a single Ice hair cold. has moved. Ice cold. Hey. Speaking of Ice's scene, um, speaking of Ice's scene, like, uh, I think Arnell's in the room. Um, yeah, as far as, yeah, as far as choreography, like, how long did it take to do the dance battle? Hmm. Is Arnell in here? Yeah. Arnell. Arnell? What's up? Uh, I'm yeah, here, but I think I, up, I can't start my video because I think the, the host hasn't given me permission yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, the, the choreography was done by um, Jose, Neri, and Ira, uh, basically our directors from Cabo Modern. And, uh, and the girls were choreographed also by Shannon or Jade. Um, and uh, Kimmy and Daisy, who are also here, I think, also, as well. So, um, yeah, everyone on set was so, um, you just felt like you were a part of writing history and everyone was really committed to the vision of representation, you know, and what that would mean. And everyone was, well, first of all, having ice. Isaiah from my hometown, <laughs> uh, introducing as an E-man, of course, was just so perfect. Uh, but Dante and everyone was just so gracious, so gracious on set. And you felt a unity that you just felt like you were a part of history. And um, yeah, John and Jean, like, give it up to you guys for all the sacrifices you made. And Joy, I see Joy up there too. What's up? Miss you. <laughs> Oh, Bernadette's here too. What's up, Bernadette? <laughs> yeah, so it's amazing. You still yeah. dancing, bro? Yeah, um, I, I'm part of a group called Kinjas. So the people that Kinjas. our era mentored um, created Kinjas, so my little brothers. And so, yeah, I'm a part of Kinjas and I run, I'm the board president of an international um, hip hop dance nonprofit that does uh, after school programs. So. And I'm, and I'm also a doctor of occupational therapy. So it's just a blend of careers that are the Who's right. Who's Filipino? I'm also a doctor. <laughs> He's Filipino. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, but yeah, it's just. I love it, man. Oh, there he is. Wearing the shirt. Oh, there, he there he is. Kept the shirt. <laughs> yeah. I uh, love it. Yeah, much respect to everyone here because I saw the dedication firsthand, all the Bosco brothers, every, everyone that, everything everyone put, you know, for the hours planned to be there and the, the additional hours that weren't intended that no one complained about, right? We just hung out in the parking lot during that scene, <laughs> waited for it to be done. You know, we, we hung out in the, the gym, you know, until, <laughs> until we're ready to do as many reshoots as we need to. Um, because again, we knew that this was larger than ourselves. This is about opening doors and telling people they have value um, and that the brown, the brown, the, the experience of brown, our, as our brown skin um, matters, you know. And um, so, yeah, I just eternally grateful, eternally grateful for this experience. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Arno. Hey, so you. have any of your kids, for any of you guys, have any of your kids watched this movie? And if so, what were their thoughts on the movie? <laughs> yeah, I'll introduce you to one of my kids. Oh, yeah, that that was was great. Hey, hey. Daughter, who starved birds of prey last year, so we're so proud of her. But she watched debut. I watched the debut. It's funny watching uh, my uncles beat each other up. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the best part. You don't see that in real life. They get along. Right? It's more. It's more in the movie than real life, but it looks similar. 
Who's your Who's your favorite uncle? <laughs> She's my goddaughter. I'm her Nina, so so she'll pick Don. She knows what's up. I'm the Nina. <laughs> Um, they'll, they'll beat me up outside of the Zoom if I say one or the other. So. Dante. <laughs> That's the right but, political. Uh, but yeah, Bernard, did your kids see the movie? You know, my daughter saw it like the moms knew it was like a mother daughter sleepover. And they were, and um, one of the kids is also Filipino. And they're like, we want to watch that movie. And I was like, and it was a sleepover and they were 10. And then I was like, yeah, and I, I forgot the, some, you know, the words. And then when, when you, when uh, Jason or Brandon starts doing this and insinuating <laughs> something and they were like, Bernadette, why would you show it to us? And it's like four <laughs> girls that are like, ah, oh. <laughs> but they were 10. And then they, more than anything, I think they were just um, felt naughty because it was R-rated. But um, all in all, in the end, the kids, all of them really enjoyed it. And my son was a little too young and I thought about it. I did want to show it to him because they wanted to come on to this. I think they probably um, are listening or watching, but I wanted my son to be able to see and know what we're talking about. But my daughter, totally. And they're huge fans of, you know, airbender and then they were like i said that's dante and they're like who's dante and i was like the main guy was my brother and she was like, <laughs> like all of a sudden i was the coolest mom they're like and she was you, make you a zula that makes you a zula you know oh what so that makes you a zula you know, you're oh sister. okay and then that's why she, <laughs> I, she was she, asking oh, me she was like she was like, do you really know him? And I was like, of course I know him. She was like, I don't know if you really know him because it's been so long. So I'm going to have to prove that, damn it. And be like, no, I know your mom. I know your mom. I know. <laughs> you tell her. She's like, can you, can you say hello to me? And I was like, I have settled down. <laughs> so maybe if I see him hiking. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so they have seen it. And, and honestly, like other people like family members will say like, oh, you know, I showed it to my kids like on Christmas and with everybody being in lockdown. So a lot of like younger generations have seen it, which is, I think, amazing. So, yeah. Anybody, Joy, have you shown your kids? Well, I think we attempted to. <laughs> well, we were at one of my girlfriend's house and she was, she was like, Janet, what's up, Iva? But we were there and she was like, she was, you, the, the debut is on, I forgot what it was. Was it, is it on Netflix? I don't know what it is. It's on something. It's on Prime. On what? Prime and Apple. Prime, Apple. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was oh. like, was it, it was like maybe last year, some a year or two years ago. And anyway, she, she was like, oh my God, they have it. And she's like, she played it. And so our kids are there. I have a five-year-old and a nine-year-old. So maybe subtract a year. They don't have the, um. They don't have the attention span, dude. They're, they're like, oh, mom. And they're like, playing. They don't care. They don't care about me. <laughs> <laughs> when they're older, because I also thought about, like, you know, the language and the rating. I mean, but, yeah, they just didn't have, you know, the uh, attention span for it right now. So, yeah, they did, kind of. <laughs> 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 I didn't think I was on the screen at that point. <laughs> oh, <laughs> anybody else? Yeah, I got a chance to finally show our kids. I have a 19-year-old daughter, a uh, <laughs> 17-year-old son, and a 13-year-old daughter. Finally got a chance to show them the debut during the pandemic. They were older. We felt they were old enough to watch it, and we watched it off of this, guys. Hey! Yeah, hey! Nice. See that, y'all? We watched the actual DVD. But it was a great experience watching it with them, and uh, they, they enjoyed it. They really enjoyed it. I, 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 haven't had a chance, I haven't had a chance to show my kids yet, but I, I, we've always talked about doing a watch party with my son and all his friends that are in the neighborhood and all that, but um, we're going to make that happen soon. Right on. You know, what's the creators? Oh. Sorry. No, there was on. a couple kids that said, Hey, I watched you in this movie. I think you might be my dad. And I was like, I don't know who you are. So <laughs> <laughs> they're in different countries. I don't know, but you know, 
<laughs> we don't have kids, so we can't answer this question. No. Us three. Uh, uh, not that you actually, know. I just it actually just had a debut for my daughter last year, or in oh, wow. yeah, last year, two, uh, 2019. Oh, wow. And uh, some similarities are what we did, but did it, it was it was fun. It was interesting. <laughs> did you DJ? Did you DJ? I did <laughs> DJ a little bit. <laughs> See, there you go. I did DJ a little bit. The current members of Kaba Modern, the current dancers, said that they watched it in elementary school with their parents. Oh, <laughs> wow. I was like, damn. <laughs> Dang. Wow. 20 Makes years, sense, right, guys? 20 years? Yes. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know man. what, though, Joy? You look exactly the same. Totally don't, but thank yeah, you. Yeah, you do. <laughs> A lot of, I mean, everyone here as Filipino Americans, I think we're lucky that we we age gracefully. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I just, that's well, I, what I, can say. I mean, a lot of <laughs> us we do luckily, right? Yeah. But, you, um, you had you had hair at that time, Neil. I did. Yeah. Don't remind <laughs> everybody. Yep. I don't know. Don't you guys, remind everybody. You guys remember the BMW on set that was like that looked out of place with all the Honda Civics. <laughs> <laughs> that was Niels. <laughs> that was Niels. Sorry, man. Twenty something. BMW. What like, color was it? Was it blue or white? It was blue. 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 The blue one, right? Yeah, yeah. The blue one. It was yeah. nice. Nice width, though. Yeah, nice width. Damn. Nah, I was all right, man. It was all right. No big deal. Well, if you remember, Neil, we put your, when your car showed up on set, we actually put you. We specifically put you right in the front so that it would get like a lot of like visibility and give us production value. Oh, thanks, Gene. So you got you, you got you got prime placement because of how cool your car was. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> you know, and you know, Neil was actually in a basketball scene. They use his head as the basketball. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Only a relative can get away with that. Oh, oh man. Hey, but speaking of that basketball scene, man, I remember something when we were filming that, um, and I I think it was Darian or Dion, man. Um, I got so hyped for that scene because at the time, basketball was my life. Me, E-Man's brother, Mikey, and our other buddy that was, uh, you know, uh, in that scene too. So we were filming and it was either Dion or Dar where you guys were dribbling. I got so into it. I ripped the ball out. And then uh, you're like, hey, chill out, man. We're only, we're just, <laughs> movie, bro. you're playing too tough on D. I thought I was really getting sweated by the gangster brothers. I'm like, damn. <laughs> you guys remember that? I knocked the ball from you guys and it went <laughs> out. And you're like, chill out. all these years, man. Yep, yep. So, but don't make me look bad on the basketball floor, all right? I'm yeah, yeah. Like, I remember yeah. Saying, it was freezing out there. It was, it was. cold that night. Yep, yeah, but you guys remember what you were doing to keep warm? Keep getting. Keep getting. I just remember yeah. us, we were, we were doing push-ups. We yeah, were, you were, we were right? Because you guys were on the white feeder trying to get all <laughs> yeah, the white feeder. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We were trying to look swole a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Well, we had a basketball <laughs> coach train us, Keith Gibb. Yeah. Shout out to Keith. But I do remember that rim was a little bouncy. The rim was bouncy. That double rim, man. It's hard to play on a double rim. Everybody knows that. But I do remember one time, I do remember one time, Dante, Dante took a shot from like top of the key, threw it over the backboard, and, said, and he hit some car. Like, car. He said, oh shit, I'm sorry. I was in the ball off screen, though. <laughs> he threw it over the backboard. I was a little hyped. Sometimes that adrenaline hits you once the camera starts rolling. Oh, yeah. I also remember we did about 20 takes of Dar making that layup, and he yeah. never. Made 20 it. takes. <laughs> the problem was it was you know the up and under. I, that rim was bouncy, man. Like it was cold. They didn't show you missed though. They showed you made it. Bro. You missed it. You missed it. It's spinning, spinning it. off the rim in the film, and it, and they cut away. But I don't think that was. No, <laughs> you made it. You made it. But everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro. Yeah, but you guys won though. I thought that was we a did. shot that made you win. Yeah, it's acting, acting. Oh, the acting. Okay. It acted like we made it, even though I don't think it went. <laughs> Listen, if we play in real life, oh, us two we'll would kill these dudes. We'll murder. Unathletic. We're all oh, yeah. Yeah. I want to see that, though. You know, put that in the day for two, actually. I'm going to tell you guys to make that movie again. Pat, play the Easter eggs right now. What's that? Oh, yeah. What's that? Easter eggs. Easter eggs. Pat got Easter eggs. Let's all hear the, it. All the misses are in the DVD. Oh, uh, all my misses, yeah. 
It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> the bloopers. He's going to guard me. <laughs> I, I was only playing the character. <laughs> um, so a question for uh, Bernadette so, uh, and, and Joy. Because you, got, you ladies had the, uh, the dance scene, right? Like the PCN scene, the debut scene. Yes, so, Derek too. Oh, yeah, Derek too. So did yeah. you have prior experience in doing that dance, or did you just have to learn it right then and there for the film? Absolutely not. Absolutely not? You did? You had experience, Joy? No, I said, no, I didn't. I did to Nick, oh, like, oh. in like fourth grade, like for our little cultural fair thing in my elementary school because I had a Filipino teacher, but that was it. I just did to Nick Lee. No, I grew up doing uh, yeah. cultural dances in the Bay Area, but at, we, we rehearsed a lot. We would shoot all day and then Joel Asinto yeah, and, the, and the whole dance crew would come and then we would practice, you know, for a couple more hours every night. And then like, I know, I remember, I mean, you had to practice with us, Joy, for the traditional and for the hip hop. Yeah. You had to do both. Like you were dancing with Rollins and then you also danced with us. That's right. Yeah. But you guys had like the more like detail. Right. I just was and Bernadette like, sprained her ankle too. Yeah, she had a sprained yeah. ankle. Yeah. 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 You can see it in the film. Sometimes she, she has a wrap over her basketball. No, shut ankle girl. <laughs> but I still did the whole dance. No, you were but great. I yeah, you did the whole dance. I remember you were crying. You were, you were like, in so much pain. I know. But you killed it. <laughs> This but is I, stop your foot harder. <laughs> I know. And then, I, like, because uh, I had sprained my ankle, and then Jean would be like, if you can't do it, you know, just let me know. So they put a brace on my ankle, and I still did the whole dance. So, Great. which was, yeah. I, I, I was like, no, I didn't practice for nothing. I was like, I'm going to do it. So I was very <laughs> proud. Actually, older between you and Dante in the movie. I couldn't figure that out. Was he your little brother? Was he your older brother? Are you guys the same age? Oh, Dante. I, you know, I was part of that too. We were trying to figure that out, huh, Gene? Like we, we, we were able to like figure that out somehow. <laughs> yeah. The, because he was the, going the, to the, like college and because she just only, had a debut, only so. Nine months, they're only like nine or 10 months apart. In the okay. story, they're only nine or 10 months apart. That's, that's the, the subtext. Right. Uh, they had Bernadette and then they had and then they got pregnant with uh, Ruben right after, which is the reason he? why they had to make the sacrifice. Yeah, and so she's uh, character has to she does call me little thing. brother in the piece yeah. one time. Yeah. yeah. Wake yeah. up, so, so, little brother. Wake yeah. up, little brother. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah. And you know, we're, the we're very blue collar family, so her day two might have been coming later than her actual birthday. We don't know, you know, could have been like six months after birthdays. It takes a little time to get that money together for you know, this debut. <laughs> but I think I, I think you're a year older than me, you know, some of the yeah. Irish twins. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, Less than a year apart. You know, um, a lot of time has gone by like 20 years, right? And then one of the things that the movie depicts, right, which was actually true, Brenda, you probably know this when we were, you know, living in Cerritos. Um, mm -hmm. It really, and I hate to even say it like this, but a lot of Phil Lambs really weren't really inviting of, you know, Pinoy's when they first arrived. So, you know, like, I think it's, uh, who is it, Dion? You, where you make fun of your uh, homie cousin. Oh, who's cousin, a, a yeah. Mom, yeah. Right? Yeah, oh, I remember yeah. that character, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's sad. Who wrote it like that, man? I'm very <laughs> welcome of every What a jerk. <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> No, you know, I mean, it's, it's not fair. Yeah, yeah, you know, so he's great. <laughs> Shout out to Conrad, rest in peace. Uh, I love working with him. Uh, one of my favorite scenes, obviously, is when he punches me in the face. Um, because that was, I mean, that was probably my biggest scene in the movie. Um, but other than that, one of my favorite but scenes. Conrad was brilliant in the movie, though, too. Conrad, yeah, he was brilliant. But one of my favorite parts also is when he goes, oh, how's the vinegar? Vinegar. I thought that. Oh, yeah. It was so great. It always gets a laugh. And, and it's not that we are laughing at the Filipino accent, we are laughing with it because we all have family members and, you know, some of us might speak like that, you know? And it's, to me, it's, it's just an, an ode and, uh, to, to, to our culture. But some people, it happens to be funny. 
Yeah, no, I understand, I understand though, because uh, growing up as a Phil Ann, right? I mean, there was kind of that separation between the Phil Ann's and the Pinoy's, right? It's just, yeah. Some, some people think weren't as accepting at that time. back then. I think that time, I think that times are changing. I, and we've been traveling a lot back and forth to the Philippines and connected a lot with the Filipino art scene out there. And, and I had to deal with, you know, us as Phil Ann's, you know, it's that thing about being ethnic and American, looking down at your own homeland culture and not having pride in it or like not wanting to sound like your grandma or your cousins that come over thinking they're fobs and and you know as I and myself personally but the boys to be going back and you know I hope times are changing where we actually appreciate uh you know our the immigrants that come here that are, especially with our family you know and the beauty of that and working with a lot of the art scene in Manila really made me check myself from what I thought about the Filipino accent. Why do as a Phil Lamb that I kind of like think of it as something that would to be far further away from. But I think it truly depicts, especially us during that time, mm -hmm. even in the country, us as individuals, but I hope that that's changing how we look at our, you know, ourselves and uh, uh, the, the Filipino parts of ourselves. Yeah, but, I think it's definitely uh, changed. Um, you know, especially even for me, but back in the days, I wouldn't even like consider, and it's sad to say this, like marrying somebody straight from the Philippines, but guess what ended up happening? I ended up marrying somebody straight from the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's what happened, man. So yeah. anyways, Dion, uh, you know, to your character, man, you were always kind of like, you're that homie always protecting almost like your leader. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a few scenes in there where I'm not saying you're instigating, but you're definitely stepping up to the plate, right? Calling out your, your Bob cousin on why he didn't jump in, like um, the basketball scene, like saying, yeah, who's got next? I think that was you, right? Like, yeah. 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 You know like, what I mean? Um, it was kind of like, it was kind of like Yago, you know, um, from like a Shakespearean piece. He's like that guy in, in his ear, just, that's just talking shit. And it's not really going to do anything. Obviously, he gets knocked out in the middle of the movie, you know what I'm saying? So that's where I was kind of coming at it from, is like, he's one of those dudes that was like, yeah, 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 hype you up. Yeah, you got this shit. You got this, man. And then when it shit hits a fan, you're like, I, I can't really do anything. You know what I'm saying? Hype man. The game I call the lieutenant. The hype man. The game I call it lieutenant. Lieutenant? Lieutenant. It's just above a private. Just above yeah. the lieutenant. He was being lieutenant. Oh, uh, yeah. We all have those people in our, in our friends of ours, you know what I mean? That's yep. all top. Um, but you know, I got I got my character got hit at the end. And yep. uh, <laughs> I'm cool with that. It was yep. comedic. It was fun. Right, comedic. right. And then we had Derek too, man, the brother going deep, man. He went deep. Oh yeah. There's a real Edwin, you know? And he's an <laughs> actor now too. And I see him at auditions and that fool beats me out sometimes. But um I I was fortunate. To uh, spend some time with him and talk to him and uh, tribal Pinoy, tribal Pinoy, yeah, and and, and that's how I, it was nice to do that research. And, and sometimes I'm accused of, of going hard like that uh, with my family and my, yeah. you know, talking too much. Uh, so I, I, could, his I kids. yeah, my kids get lectured like that all the time. <laughs> so it, it wasn't that hard to do. Very close to life. Oh, that was you being you. Yeah, <laughs> close. <laughs> that that on Edwin Habakon, who I went to college with, and uh, Derek did him justice. But it's funny, yeah, it's totally funny that he became an actor later on. It is, yeah, it's right? crazy. But he, yeah, he's cool. It's cool that he did. It is crazy, right? That he became an actor. That is wild. Shout out to Edwin. I know. Shout he's out to Edwin. Well too. Yeah. Shout out to Edwin. Hey, Law, you had a question for Joy, right? Uh, Should I oh, ask yeah. it for you? Our, no, our, there was yeah. something else. Oh, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, um, we'll skip to that, and then um, you know, obviously we're not we're being Filipino, right? So I don't know if you guys recall, being that it's twenty years ago, but is there any uh, chismis that you guys had from back then? Like, were there any off-screen oh, ro romances? Oh, see, there you I'm, go. That's what it was. John, not that I grow up. Uh, <laughs> oh, chismis is chismis. Chismis. Everyone's willing to admit. Uh, no. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> we we, we should have asked the two ants to jump on here, dude. The two ants. There were crushes. There were crushes. I know oh, that. Okay. I mean, I don't know. 
Anyone want to spill the beans? Let's hear. No, I don't know, man. I don't know. Twenty years is long enough. <laughs> 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 Three I think there's more Christmas during our debut tour than actual shooting. Yeah. What's up? Patricia got married. <laughs> yeah. Found a wife. Found his wife. Patricia found about the successful things. I, I'm just here to sell merchandise. Anyone want to buy a DVD, a, DVD, a poster, a combo? Anyone? A book. A book, yeah. Uh. Pat, Pat found his wife through the debut. Pat found his wife, so. Oh, I love it. Nice. Awesome. And, my, and my purpose in life. Yes. Hey, Pat, did you use, use any of the lines in the debut? Um, I did the well. No, I shouldn't. I shouldn't spill the beans here. Right, I I did try to use the uh, the hands thing on Mel, but but on the massage thing, but that <laughs> that didn't close the deal. So. <laughs> what about any of the the cheesy lines? I think Joy, there was a line uh, that you actually said, right? Like um, something about a baker, right? Like uh oh, yeah, what was that line again? Oh my god, what was it? I wish. Yeah. yeah, you actually said the line that a guy said to you. I thought it was about, it's like, are you, is your dad a baker? Or something like that. Now, yeah, because um, you're you like a cutie pie, pie or whatever it was. Is your cutie pie? You're a cutie pie. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, something about cutie pie, just like you, right? Something. Yep. Like yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Anyone ever try that on you after watching the movie? Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. The hand thing, yeah. yeah. But... <laughs> there we go. Soft hands, moisturize. <laughs> hey, so um, so for the creatives over here, how did you guys actually get to work with good, like yeah. Terso, Eddie Garcia? You know, how did you guys get to work with with them? Being all out in the Philippines, how did you get them to come down to the U.S. and just do some work? That's the gene thing. That's the gene. Thing. Okay, gene. We basically bullshitted our way through it, really. Oh. <laughs> that's really, that's really what it was. No, we um, in the Philippines, it's you know, uh, things get done with bribes, right? And so you roll up there, and and basically we hired a publicist, and the publicist explained to us how it was done, and how it's done is you pay off all the writers who you want to write about. And so we, uh, we, I went to my ATM card and withdrew a bunch of pesos, dollars, and then turned it into pesos. And then I basically, you know, had interviews all around town with all the different uh, newspapers and everything. Um, and they were kind enough to write very generous things about us in their newspapers. And um, very quickly, we developed a little bit of a reputation around town as being the big American movie that was in town casting Filipino actors. And we were able to get pretty much everybody who we wanted to audition to audition for the film, which is pretty great. Yeah. <clears throat> but that was, that was basically it. I mean, nobody knew that we were just rookies, didn't know what we were doing. Um, but we just pretended, we pretended like we belonged <laughs> and people bought it. So, hey, you know, I can't well, complain. Was, was Dean Devlin already attached by that time, Gene? Was Dean already attached? Dean Devlin was attached, yeah, exactly. Dean Devlin, the producer at the time of Independence Day. Independence Day, is actually one of the one of the big reasons why the debut got made. If, if, if Independence Day had not been as big of a hit in the '90s as it was, uh, I'm not sure if we would have gotten the kind of momentum that we needed to get the project going. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, those are some legendary actors and, and actresses out there who played. And so, when I watched like the movie again, there's some pretty powerful scenes, like the one that I thought that uh, Eddie Garcia killed it in was the one where he was arguing with the dad, you know, with Dante's uh, dad, with Terso Cruz right there. You know what I mean? Great Just, scenes, uh, great that scenes. was a crazy scene, right? That it was, was like, super powerful. I thought it was so heavy because like the Tagalog that he used was so like so weighted, you know, cartero, tagahatid, nansula. It's like all you are is a postman. And I know we were all thinking, like, hey, that's a pretty good job. Like, you know, <laughs> you make a lot of money. But like obviously Filipino standards, if you're not a doctor or a lawyer or something, but even 
like I remember like watching them do that and it was so like simple one line couple of words or whatever but he was so he just commanded the room whatever he was saying or doing even when it was like oh manga a poco you know he was very like whatever the scene called for he delivered instantly and obviously that's why he's like legendary but i remember watching him and being like that it's amazing it's amazing so one of one of the lines i i use to this day from eddie garcia i every time i see winston i'm like hello hello <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's where it comes from Oh my gosh. It came from the movie, it came from the debut and it, oh. me and Winston always greet each other even AJ, AJ Calame. I'm yeah. like, "Hello, hello." Yeah. Amazing. That makes so much sense now. When I see you guys greet each other, I'm like, "What?" Is that all like? the time. All the time. That's It's either that or my my. <laughs> <laughs> AJ just typed it right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I remember, listen, I remember when um, Tirso and them, they brought real alcohol on the set because we were all talking crap or whatever. And then they started pouring us real drinks in the scene, right? trying to get everyone drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you guys remember that? Now you, now you do that on sets. <laughs> now I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> what did they bring you guys, like Fenador or Presidente? Did they bring you like the Filipino drinks or? Do you recall? He had like there? whiskey. Well, we were drinking oh, like Corvo 1800. Uh, 1800 and well, oh, it, it was well, tequila 1800. It was tequila? He liked the 1800 Corvo, yeah. What? No, it wasn't, it wasn't Chivas. I thought it was Chivas. Yeah, Chivas. Wasn't it Chivas? Oh, Chivas. Yeah, I thought oh, it was yeah. Chivas. <laughs> See? Did Blue you have a glass Uh No, I was trying to make a movie. <laughs> <laughs> was it long my memory of the set was the smell of the pig just going bad. Remember oh. we had we had the, the the we had the lechon and it was just like b boiling in the heat of the yeah we had to, we had to spray that thing down with Lysol to keep people from like gagging and stuff that thing was gnarly right because it sat there for like what was it like two three days or something like that. <laughs> and to get through the scene, it was it was just ah. So you didn't feed it to the two white guys that uh, they came on the set that were eating food. <laughs> 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 <White guys. laughs> Man. So, anyways, um, we wanted to kind of get into like this half on what everyone's doing now, okay? Because twenty years have passed. There's things that have changed, and people have projects. But we want to make sure the viewers get to know. What everyone's doing so they can follow you they can support you we can support you we can help promote it we know there's a lot of people here on the zoom and there's a lot of people who are watching on facebook live so where shall we begin where should we actually begin? he wants to go first I'll, go I'll, ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll lead with that so um anyway we're not asking you lyle yeah this question is actually for the bosco brothers and patricio so being that uh, the debut was actually a reflection of our upbringing, right? Like we as Filipino Americans had to create our own identity. You know, we weren't Chinese American, we weren't Japanese American or Korean American. We had to create our own identity. So this was a depiction of our upbringing, how we created our own identity by including like, obviously our five relatives, you know, um, the, like the racing scene, the Filipino gangs, you know, even like dance battles. My question for you guys is with both of your upcoming projects, like the Fab Filipino Brothers and uh, Lumpia with a Vengeance, like um, do any of the films uh, can like the generation of Filipino Americans today, you know, use that as a reflection of what's going on in this generation? So we'll start with uh, the Boscos, I guess, <laughs> because they look the most stumped. <laughs> I'm glad you started with that. I don't know. I mean, I think when we wrote this film, you know, we're older now. We're kind of, you know, it's, it's all starting a Filipino wedding. So it's a different place in life than you were in a debut. And, and teenagers at that time of life were kind of all, you know, men now at this place. But I think it's the fabulous Filipino brothers. So it's a story that I think is a universal family story. But because we're Filipino, we don't run from it. We really 
dive into the details about being Filipino, at least for our family. And of course that consists of food, dancing, just, uh, you know, integrated families within living situations. And uh, mm -hmm. just, it all comes, I mean, the theme, like the debut too, comes down to family and, and the strength of what the family means, especially within the Filipino culture. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, you and, know, we were, and we were able to explore going back to the Philippines as a film. Yeah, I had we shot in the Philippines too. So like, we, we explored that for the, the character going there for the yeah. first time and exploring homeland for the first so time. So I think, a, I mean, I think the generation that grew up with the debut are going to enjoy the film as like we all grew up. Yeah. And this is something we're doing as we're growing up. And it's still funny. It's still kind of crazy stuff going on. But uh, but it's still Filipino. Like, right. It's very Filipino, but in different in, in different flavors. All right. We have all that showing on our set too in our show. movie. But let me tell you something. It does not get spoiled. It well, it does get spoiled. <laughs> it does get spoiled. It gets spoiled, but not over time. It's taking you in another direction. But but we I mean we <laughs> called the, the movie the Fabulous Filipino Brothers because we just wanted to continue to rep for the community and, and especially in this time, this golden age of right. of Asian you know, filmmaking in pop culture in Hollywood and, and you know, how it blew up with creators Asian, but a lot of people, you, you heard it talked about, uh, debut is part of the lineage of films that led up to that point. And so as we're making films now on the other side of the camera, it's really continuing this legacy that we're talking right. about today. We didn't want to shy away from it. It's Filipino right in the name. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty, yeah. it's, we're, we're trying uh, to work you, you ain't getting out of this film without thinking about what a Filipino is. There's no way, no how. Yeah. Then you're gonna think they're fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Filipinos are fabulous. <laughs> yes, yeah. as a whole. I mean, th that, that was a theme that, uh, you know, one of the themes that was always prevailing, even when we were even experiencing the debut together, you know, whether it was a production or tour, was always trying to bridge that gap between Filipino culture and Phil Am culture, right? And so mm -hmm. I've always, I, I, and, and we saw it firsthand when we were on tour. And so even, even with Olympia, you know, we were taking this, the, the, the internal prejudice within our communities, you know, for, you know, you saw it uh, in the debut a little bit, but we did that with the first film and then but taking this, this topic about that and then trying to make it wacky into, into a comic book film. That was kind of like my in with Olympia with a Vengeance, a, 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 another way to kind of make it more universal. So it's, even though the story is, you know, Phil Am and it takes place in the Bay Area. So I, but that's always been, I think what was always successful with the debut that you saw this formula that, you know, for me, I, I mean, that's always the image I always remember on tour. Like when I saw all those folks, all those sold out screenings, not just in California, but Texas, Houston, Seattle, Virginia Beach, New York, I already knew that was the audience that, okay, what movie can we get those same audiences to watch our films? And so, but that, that, that was always the kind of the visual, like that, that, that theme. And I, I think that's why now that we're, we're representation matters and now the people are more open. Um, and that's why it's it's great that people are still talking about the debut. I know Loopy with a Vengeance started up because myself, John, and Gene, we were actually uh, writing the sequel to the debut. That, that we were we were uh, how long ago? That was like seven years ago. And then when that didn't uh, pan out, I literally used the ideas for that and I made it into Loopy with a Vengeance. So I kind of recycled <laughs> that. So. Yeah. Well, well, I just added Lumpia to it. That's all. I just added a throw Lumpia. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, let me throw up this question for all of you guys. So, yeah, besides Lumpia with a vengeance, you know, like since the debut, and this has been 20 years, like, why hasn't there, there been more films representing Filipinos or more films like the debut since then? I think people you know how hard it is. <laughs> you know, I mean, I personally went through a crazy burnout, you know, mm -hmm. especially if you had to distribute the film yourselves too. Like, usually when you make a film, you're on to your next one and writing another one. You're not promoting it and traveling around the United States and to Guam and Hawaii to to figure it out. I'll you know, I work on it. I it's a crazy mad burnout and decided to go to college, back to school and moved to Hawaii, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and studied to be a chef, but uh, thinking that would be like a nice creative outlet, and, you know, it's, uh, but I'm, I'm back to writing again, and uh, this pandemic opened my eyes to, like, what I really love to do, that is to write, and uh, 
chefing is just my day job, you know? So, mm. well, this is going back to what are we doing now, I guess, you know? <laughs> yeah, it was total burnout. And uh, Gene could attest to, like, we were just dead <laughs> our, our, our tour. That was a two-year tour. Right. We were living and breathing the film. And usually you're writing your next movie if you're, like, if you did it a standard kind of way. You're writing um, your your next project. Not you're not promoting it. You're not traveling around the United States. Um, you're writing your next film, and you send it to your agent. And then we never. I didn't, I didn't think about agents or anything like that. You know, it was all about just surviving. <laughs> yeah. No. In many ways, um, I mean, correct me if you guys, if any of you guys disagree, but I think in many ways we were a little ahead of our time. We were, we were about 15 to 20 years ahead of our time because if the debut came out five years ago, it probably would have led to a lot more opportunity um, because diversity is in style now. Diversity is actually, we're actually at a, one of the great things about the internet, um, in addition to all the other things the internet does, it also showed how stories about a very specific group um, are viable because everybody's trying to get their their piece of art to be noticed in this hyper fragmented hyper media world right where there's bajillions of websites and you know hundreds and hundreds of channels etc cetera, etc cetera. and so um diversity is now an easy way for corporate america to target a audience but back when we made the film in the 90s the internet had just started right there, none of social media didn't exist all the other different tools that people use to to promote films didn't exist and so we were kind of just kind of making it up as we went along um and and yeah I, I went bankrupt making the movie john went through a lot of financial hardship making the movie to this day we're still paying off debt every check that we get from sony goes to paying off debt and that's 20 years later right and so i, I don't know if that scared people off I, I think i probably would have been scared off if i had seen someone else do that and thought to myself do i want to go go through that myself but uh, I think a lot of it just had to do with the fact, yeah, it's just, number one, we were kind of ahead of our time. Uh, number two, everybody saw what we all went through and, and decided that that was a little too much for them, you know? Um, but today, it's a very different story today. And that's the reason why I'm happy to see the Bosco brothers doing out, out there hustling and Patricio out there doing their stuff because, you know, the infrastructure and the demand for diversity is much higher now and much more robust now than it was in the 90s. Um, and so my hope is that the lull that we had of not very many Filipino American projects coming out from the 90s up until today, hopefully that lull is behind us and we get a lot more movies like Lumpia with a Vengeance, The Fabulous Filipino Brothers, Yellow Rose, um, all of these mm. great films coming out. Yeah. Um, there's two, fil so, there's two so Filipino films in South by, our film is premiered today at South by Southwest, but also The Island, another Filipino film. So it's a, uh, yeah, you know, I, I agree with, with Gene. I think it was before it's time to a degree and, and, and it was harder to make films. I mean, it's always hard. Making films is like a very hard thing to do, but especially when this was made 20 years ago, the, the amount it took money wise and editing wise and crew wise is, is a different game, let alone the whole digital era that happened. Um, but yeah, it's just so hard to make a movie and, and, Every movie that gets made is a is a is a minor minor miracle, and so this one being made, um, and then it's just a time where there wasn't a lot of you know <clears throat> Filipino filmmakers going to make films anyway. It was like gee, there's only a handful of there's still even now there's only a handful of Filipino directors that are in town making moves and doing their thing. So think about 20 years ago. Besides Gene, there's probably yeah. I, I don't know. There's not that many young Filipino director writers trying to get movies made so that that's kind of you know that that's kind of the reason why more weren't made we just we're at a time now that there's more filipino creators creatives and creators than ever uh, all over the world especially in america so i think you're going to see more and more as we go and it's, it's exciting to see a bunch of different ones even in one of the most major film festivals in america south by southwest there's two feature films produced by, written by, directed by Filipinos, and they're totally different, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know what's great yeah, too about this film, uh, I was going to say, is that anyone that, that, a lot of people that I've met in the entertainment industry, 
they always reference the debut and how when they watched that, that got them involved in the entertainment industry. So they use the debut as their inspiration for seeing people in front of the camera and also behind the camera, you guys writing and creating it. So uh, whether they're in sound or whether they're in design or whether they're a writer or their makeup, you know, I'm telling you, a lot of people I've met and if you just talk to them and you find out they're Filipino, they, a lot of times they started their career because of this movie. That's great. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's a real Just honor. I mean, that, that, that happens to me all the time as well, too. You hear from folks who, whose careers I admire, people that I look up to, and I find out from them afterwards that one of the, one of the kind of things that got them going to thinking that they could actually get, you know, be successful in the entertainment industry was watching our little movie, which is pretty great. So I feel very, I just feel very, very fortunate to have been given the opportunity to have made the movie, even though you know, it, it took a long time for more films like it to get made, you know, it, it, it really does, did seem to have served a very, it was very influential, I think, in terms of getting a lot of other younger people to, to give it a shot, give it a try. And, and we have a lot more diversity uh, in media today um, because of the efforts of all these people who are just out there trying to tell their stories and tell their, keep our community relevant, which is great. Hey Bernadette, can you tell that story about your that stylist? Can you tell? Oh, that yeah. Well, uh, I um, I was shooting something. It's a Kerry Washington thing for Facebook uh, called Five Points, and um, she's doing my hair. We're in the trailer, and I'm working there for the day. And she's like, "Are you really Filipino?" And she's like teasing my hair, looking at me in the mirror, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm Filipino." And she goes, okay, good. They hired uh, an Indian woman to play a Filipino nurse because they said that they couldn't find a Filipino actress. And I was like, well, that's BS. So then she's doing my hair and then um, she goes, oh, have I seen you in anything? And I said, do you remember, I don't know if you watched the movie, The Debut, and she like stops and she's like, oh my God, are you kidding? Uh, me and all my family up in the Valley, we went to go see it. And she goes, and she keeps teasing my hair. And she's like, what were you in that? And I was like, oh, I, I was the girl that had the debut. And she was like, oh my God. And then, so she like, we both start, she starts crying. I start crying. She was like, you don't understand. That made me like, feel like, wow. You know, it's the first time I saw my family up there. And, you know, so now she's a professional hair and makeup artist. And she's like, you know, there's people in this industry that look like me. Therefore, you know, she's able to do that and stuff like this. So it, it means a lot to me. I do get that a lot from people like when they realized they were like, oh my gosh. And so like Jean said, a lot of people will say that, that, that watching this movie, whether it be behind the scenes or being an actor, you know, kind of help encourage them because seeing some us do it made, made it seem possible for them to do it. So Pat, I'm patting everyone in the back. <laughs> yeah. Can I share something real quick? Um, just yes. from the from the dance from the dance point of view as well. Like even though we know like hip hop was created by our black brothers and sisters, growing up through the eighties and nineties, their Pinoys were up in the mix and heavy contributors. You know, in the DJing and the dance world, and so growing up through the through that time. I never saw representation of DJs or dancers that look like me on television, even though growing up in Carson Cerritos and all over California, you saw that, like we were contributing to the culture, we we're participating in the culture. So I appreciate like the doors that were open, you know, um, because Cabo Modern and, and I have to just say Joy kicked ass on the and the dance scene. She worked so hard. And she was just like one of us. Like we we were working on hard in rehearsal. She was at, she was like just you know kicking ass with us and everything that Daisy, Kimmy, and Shannon threw out of her. Oh, her and the premiere girls just killed that, you know. Um, but it meant a lot to us to be part of those first representation on the big screen to let other. Pinoy, Pinay, brothers and sisters all around the world know that this has been going on. And even though we were invisible in media, 
it's part of who we are, especially on the West Coast, you know. Uh, so, um, you know, I just being a part of that and seeing now, you know, that's the first time I saw any brown person <laughs> in a dance scene on a movie was in the debut to so to be part of that and then see what has happened afterwards uh, and seeing, you know, um, so much growth. Because after that, you know, I made my way back to the Philippines because I wanted to give back and seeing the leaders in the dance community in the Philippines uh, be inspired by this movie of what's possible and not possible. You see the ripples are beyond the US all the way to Guam, Hawaii and the Philippines. And you know, you did something right. You know what I mean? That people can look on the screen and say, that person looks like me, I can create something I have value. Um, so that's the magic and the never ending ripples that I think that this film will be, that'll be a strong part of its legacy. And DJs, oh. seriously, DJs and, and B-boys and B-girls and poppers and lockers, so much Pinoy representation, but it wasn't until this movie that we were able to show our face. Yeah, shout they out to the creators and to you, Arnell. I mean, you're, you're a big reason why the dance scene is what it is like today. You know, you you put Cabo Modern on the map. I mean, Friendship Games 1991. I talk about this a lot. <laughs> you guys exploded onto the scene. You guys changed how Friendship Games cheers were done. You know, like forever. You know oh. what I mean? Really? So you guys got to be in this film. The creative saw like saw the value of what you guys can bring. Definitely put it out. And then you know you can't talk about dancing and DJing without citing you, your crew, guys like E Man and Ice. Uh, definitely pioneers who are still doing it. And all you guys, what's amazing is, even though this was 20 years ago, you guys are still doing it. And you're not just doing it. You guys are on, an, on another level doing it. So, I mean, that's just completely awesome what all you guys have, have been able to do for the love of, you know, like a passion that you have to really turn it into this art form now that is accepted by you know all walks of life right they're looking at filipinos in the scene it's because of you guys who put us on the map and actually got us that representation so shout out to Cabo modern arnell e-man ice mm -hmm. and thank you guys for uh, giving us that representation and thank you creatives for actually throwing these guys in the movie mm -hmm. and so uh, we appreciate that Anyways, you guys could cheer up a little bit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Celebration, right? Yeah. You know, I was gonna say is that they, they can't have a dance show now without like uh, without Filipino um, dancers. If no you way. notice that every single time they have a dance show, there's Filipino dancers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, oh, hey, you know what? I got I gotta mention this, and and I hope I don't. Uh, this person doesn't get mad, but Bernadette actually used to dance too. She actually performed, Bernadette, you remember that? You performed on a, a dance show. I think that was at Gar, right? Yeah, back of dances yeah. and everything. At Gar yeah. High School? Yeah, yeah, no, Bernadette was putting down some hip hop moves yeah. back in the day. And in college too. And I in did, college, I did. yeah, sorry about that. Hey now. <laughs> Do we have That's the tape? I want to see that video. Let's roll that tape, church I did. I have to tell you, I did tell Gene. I remember during like whatever pre production, I was like, Does Rose get to dance? And he's like, No, you already have the big, you know, like dance, you know, traditional dance. I was like, hmm. You see me on the side? I was like, I know the moves. I was like, I know the moves. I'll try to inch in there like into the camera you see me like mimicking it the whole time and i was like whatever gene but i kept like trying to show up. <laughs> we actually grew up b-boys like og b-boys in the early 80s and none of us danced in the movie well you danced a little bit oh i got a story for not you guys yeah and then he was not supposed to be able to dance which is not that tr true part of the truth <laughs> I got a story for you. Actually, I got a question. Hey, Dante, do you remember this? E-Man, you were with me. Dante, there was this, uh, you remember Liberty Park in Cerritos? Yeah, yeah. There was this party over there. Do you remember battling at that party? You actually I'm sure battled. Did. I'm sure yeah, I, did. I don't know. I don't you know actually battled one of our friend's brothers, dude. Who was it? Oh. Uh, John Palma's brother, Dexter. 
Oh wow! <laughs> Extra kava. So I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we're, we're b boys, so like we always like we'll battle, win, we'll lose, yep. draw. Like it doesn't matter. It's just battle for the sake of yeah. battle. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, we didn't know you. We're just like, hey, is that guy from uh, the movies, bro? And then you started dancing, and then because <laughs> well, the thing's like, dancers see dancers, and yep. you know they're dancers, and so you're always gonna get caught out by dancers just to at least get your boogie on. So it's no, like, no, it, w- it was all love, man. But it, it made that party hype, bro. You know what I mean? Like the uh, <laughs> battle over there, <laughs> everyone coming around in a circle. I forgot who was DJing, but everyone coming around in a circle, people cheering for Dexter, people cheering for you. Yeah, no, it was, I mean, it was, I'm sure we did. Exactly. I don't remember in particular, but I'm sure it sounded like something I would have done. What was this, this pre Tatiana Ali or after Tatiana? Yeah, prior to, <laughs> that same circle, that same era, that same era. <laughs> That's dope. So, hey, Bernadette, I want to go back to you real quick because um, I wanted to see what you were up to today. I've I seen a couple of videos on YouTube, you doing like stand up comedy. I did stand up comedy for a while mm-hmm. um, with Rex and like a bunch. Of, it's funny with Joe Coy and all these guys, Joey Gila. I, I don't know if you guys know him as yep. well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, Joey. But did that for a while, for a long time. And then, you know, and then you have kids and stuff like that. But I always, I, I'm still like, I've done commercials, you know, still auditioning with 2020 kind of a lot of stuff was on hold and slower than normal. But like, I have to say recently, all the, a lot of the projects I've gone out for has been, Joy and I text about it, has been specifically like for a Filipina character. And like, it'll awesome. say Filipina must have knowledge yeah. of Tagalog and stuff. And I, I'm not letting anything out of the bag that that is not on deadline, but I'm sure the Bosco brothers have gone out for it and Joy as well. But they are making a movie in the realm of, you know, the debut in Filipino culture. Joe Koi is making one. And oh, you read for that one too? Uh, yeah, yeah, um, Eugene, mm-hmm. Eugene, is that? Um, no, they had me for Eugene, and then they brought me back in for a 50 to 70 year old Tito. Stop. <laughs> Oh, I was like, okay, I guess yeah, I, I was bit. for Regina, for, for Joe's sister, so we'll see. I read for know. Regina. <laughs> you, of course you did. Me, you, and Joy. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, it's nice to see those opportunities, but, you know, just, I've done some commercials. I did a commercial during pandemic for, for you know, just, I had done a McDonald's, a Walmart, you know, stuff seen like it. that. So, yeah, so... It's still working, yeah. you know, as as much as will allow and opportunities come up. So 2021, you know, so there you go. that's what I'm up to. Right. What about you, Joy? I'm on, a, I, I am still, on, I, I have a nine to fiver, got to pay my mortgage, but I have two kids now, uh, five-year-old, nine-year-old Bisco and Zaya, my babies. Um, and I think when I became a mom, like my world just shifted, you know what I'm saying? So it, it, it changed things, but it was like a good change, you know? And I'm still able to, to audition. What's great about the pandemic is everything is like, you submit online so I don't have to drive anywhere. <laughs> and what's crazy is, is like, now I'm reading for stuff and I'm like a mom to like a, a a high school eight-year-old or like a 20-year-old in college I'm like god damn really okay not not 50 70 like you Dion but I mean <laughs> you know, I, I just have to like tweak my mind I read for something and it was a really great project and then I'm like I started identifying with the daughter I was like I could do that like I'm a mom what I know but then reality check I'm like however old I was plus 20 now. So (laughs) I can't, I can't play a high school kid. (laughs) Still try, I still try though. I still try to play that high school kid. Just shave real tight. Uh, No, what? (laughs) I don't know. What about you? you Um, Aside from your movie. Which is going to be amazing. Um, uh, like you, uh, McDonald's commercial, Walmart commercial yeah. during the pandemic. Yeah. 
you know? Uh -huh. um, bunch, of, bunch of commercials. I've been fortunate to do a lot of uh, commercials. But funny enough, the pandemic and the quarantine has, they wanted real family members. So we've done a bunch of commercials together as a family yeah. unit, which was which was great. Uh, John, our dad, our dad and was was like the, the lead yeah. in one of the spots of our spot in the Walmart commercial, and so they got yeah. a little taste of fame. And we put our parents also in uh, Fabulous Filipino Brothers. They pay, play our parents. Um, it's crazy. Our mom has become quite the actress. She plays John John Briones's mom in Ratchet too. Like. She started acting like it's crazy, like auditioning and, and yeah. And then she did something stuff. else. I would say Glenn Close. Like she's she's she like she works more than we do. Well, she's <laughs> killing the game, man. Yeah. And then I mean, yeah, it's been a weird pandemic, but I, I was able to do a, a, a series on a uh, Twitch, like their first narrative show called Artificial. So I did like a whole season of that, and then we've been heavily working on this film and. Getting ready for a few, a next the next few projects. Hopefully, we get some financing mm -hmm. for the next. I, I shot a movie with Danny Trejo, who was in Lumpia. He did with the Vengeance. Yeah. Uh, I shot a movie with him. I played. I was in a cartel, American Sicario. I was like the Filipino dude with a <laughs> Chicano accent. <laughs> in the cartel. In the cartel. What's up, homie? Yeah, once a gangster, <laughs> always a gangster. Yeah. Orale. That's right. That's right. And Darian's in Lumpia too. I mean, those boys are. You guys are in Darian's in too. Yeah, Lumpia too. Darian's in Lumpia too. So yeah. when we do the double feature, it's really a Darian Bosco double feature. <laughs> Patricio double feature. So we're, I mean, we, you know, we can announce that we, we, in May. We're going to be in May, right? We're going to be together in May. I think I can, right? April, we can? Yeah, uh, yeah. Can in May. yeah, in May. We'll be doing, uh, we'll be screening together in San Francisco, premiering. In San Francisco, so. Hey, I'm in San. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joy's already there. She's waiting for us. Joy, Joy is, does narrate also in Liquid Avengers. We got. Yeah. I, I, I do. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, she re reprises her role. Go, go, Patricia. Oh no, no, um, send, um, the, send, send the flyer. Patricia. Send the flyer. Send the flyer. Oh wait, wait, here, here, here. <laughs> the Zoom call there. Uh, I don't know. Also, I, also so wrote a book. I also wrote a book in the in the last few yeah, years. You can, so you can buy a memoirs book I wrote <laughs> called From Ruby to Zuko, which actually it was. I was kind of in the middle of the tour when when the pandemic hit. So when the pandemic kind of like opens up, I'll probably travel around the country and just kind of talking about the book and continuing to you know promote the book out there. From Ruby to Zuko, you can go to Amazon and grab it. Oh, uh, I, I got that book. I got the book at Barnes. I got the signed version, Dante. I got the, book, you got the, book, I got the signed version at the Grove. I was like, oh, there's a signed yeah, version of, of the book. Yeah, his Joe Jackson on with his kids. His kids are working a bunch of Derek's like. Yeah, my kids, them. my kids audition a lot and they work. I mean, you guys know Ella from Birds of Prey, but also music. I got my son, he plays drums. My other daughter plays bass and then Ella plays. And then I have another son, DJ, and we've just been heavily producing music and, and music videos. Some of them are coming out soon. So she look out for that. Song well, drop today, right? She had a Korean song drop today, but we also did a collab with Ruby Abara from the Bay Area called Gold about celebrating our gold skin. And uh, music video is going to drop. It's going to be very controversial. But the song's on Spotify right now. So yeah, it's all on Spotify. You want to drop that in the chat, like uh, the book and then the song? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're not that tech savvy. We're on iPad right now. We're on iPad. We're squeezing here. Crazy. I'm just kidding. So, anyways, um, <laughs> anybody else? Anybody else have something going on? Go to you, E man. What are you doing? Um, I'm still on the radio on Power 106 and 935 KD. Um, and I've always been behind the scenes for the last years, but I'm deeply more behind the scenes. I oversee the uh, programming uh, at Power 106, uh, 935 KD, and now um, our reggaeton station here in LA, uh, Cali 939. So uh, that's been keeping me pretty busy these last uh, months and years. But you're still DJing every now and then. Still right? DJing, still DJing on the radio on Power. DJ on K Day and uh, finally starting to do some stuff on Twitch. Uh, thanks to Ice, who's, who's helped me out a lot and coached me on it. Uh, been on Twitch now for what two, two and a half months. No. So just getting used to that. But still, still on the radio, still doing it. 
All right. So how do people listen to you on Twitch? What's your handle? DJ E-Man. There you go. Nice right there. Twitch, so, yeah, DJ E-Man. That's Friday, Saturdays, right? Friday and Saturdays, yep. 9 30, 8 30 at night. Okay. Nice. And then Ice, you're like the Twitch king, man. So he is a Twitch king. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, Ice is Pogi Bryant. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not me, man. That's you. Uh, well, yeah, like this uh, pandemic, you know, it turned our, our world upside down. So I haven't been able to do any kind of live events at all. But yeah, it helped me discover this whole new lane of uh, streaming. So the streaming world, which is Twitch and now Kumu as well. So I stream on Twitch on a daily basis at 11 a.m. And then I'm on Kumu on every Friday at 12 noon, which is we call it the noon dance. And so, yeah, the streaming world is incredible, man. Uh, it's been able to just unite the DJ community in a way to where it's our first 24-hour DJ station live on the internet, and it's worldwide. And then, um, yeah, man, I've been able to connect with just people daily from around the world. I mean, today I was shouting out someone from Johannesburg, South Africa, Argentina, Over. Dubai. Like, it's just crazy. It's people awesome. are in my streams from all over the world. But yeah, it's it's amazing. So yeah, you guys check me out on uh, on the, the live streaming tip. And then um, I was there for for Dante's book release. Oh yeah, yeah. I was gonna <laughs> see you over there. And then uh, me and Derek, we also were on a little short, which was called uh, "Flip the Record," which I wish. Right. Oh, that was yeah. a dope show, Marie Jamora. Yeah, Marie Jamora, yeah. another Filipina director who's on the up and up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do we catch you every midnight on my OnlyFans? Um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Only fans. That paper. <laughs> What's the subscription? <laughs> I take, I accept Bitcoin, so drop Bitcoin in my box. Oh my gosh. Damn. What about you, Arnell? What, what are you what working on right now? Uh, well, Cabo Modern is getting ready for its 30th anniversary, wow. <laughs> which is wow. crazy. Next year, it'll be 30 oh. years old. So I'm super proud of that legacy. Um, um, with Culture Shock LA, I'm actually uh, developing, I, I launched it um, five years ago, a dance therapy program for kids with special needs because I work with the autistic population. So trying to give them opportunities to express themselves and learn social skills through hip hop dance, you know? Um, and I've been working, um, besides working with Kinjas as well, I've also uh, launched a leadership program for dance leaders all across the world. So I've reached about 225 leaders since last year, um, just giving them skills on how to community build, um, how to work on communication skills, uh, weave and be conscious of social justice and also do self-care. So um, just trying to invest in the future leaders in their communities all around the world. Uh, have a lot of leaders from the Philippines, which just gives me a lot of hope and inspiration, especially during this crazy pandemic time, you know. Um, so giving them a space, leaders a space to also be supported and uplifted. Um, that's kind of been my passion as well. And I know I, Lyle, I'm going to probably be supporting SIPA as well um, in the in the near future um, to pour back into the California, you know, community here. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me right now. Yeah, <laughs> love it. Wow, actually, where we did our auditions for the dance crews. You know that? What'd you say? I remember oh, wow. we did our auditions for the dance crews. So, oh, <laughs> yes, we actually used that spot. Yeah, for sure. I think we yeah, did a table of... read there too at one point. Didn't we do a table read there? Exactly, we did. Yeah, I think we did too. Yeah. Hey, so, would you guys that? actually be willing to, well, not to put anyone on the spot, right? but would you guys actually be willing to do a, a sequel to this movie? Now that 20 years have passed, maybe Bernadette has a daughter having a debutante. I don't know. We actually We've started working on a lot of the years. Yeah, we yeah. have the Yeah, Patricio and, and um, John uh, joined me on writing uh, treatment uh, for the for debut two. And it was gonna be a wedding movie and it was gonna be set in the Philippines because we want to try and bridge the gap, as they were mentioning earlier, trying to bridge the gap between the culture, the Filipino culture in the Philippines and, and expat culture, Filipino-American culture, which is like 10% of the Filipino community all around the world, right? But um, we got picked up and then we got dropped when the studio that wanted to finance it got bought out by another studio and they, they deleted the entire development department. They, they cut it loose. So we 
weren't able to go forward on that. But um, the idea was to bridge the gap between the cultures by making a wedding movie and having it set back in the home country. And uh, it was we had it a was great nice ending, Gene. We had a great twist ending, or then twist ending, but we had a great ending to that. That's yeah, we did. I, I really, I was really looking forward to getting the movie made. It was really disappointing when, when our, when our uh, project got cut, but it was nice to, to see that our proof of concept actually did work. We, the theory that we had that bridging the gap between the two cultures would work if you did a wedding movie in the home country, a few years later, Crazy Rich Agents pulled it off and, and proved that we were right. So I don't know, you know, maybe one of these days somebody will come along and say they want to go and finance our, 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 our sequel and stuff. But And we're going to start the Kickstarter um, right now, tonight. Kickstarter, everyone knows. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have Dante produce it. He's a multi-million dollar success. Yeah. That's right. Back that debut, everyone. Back that debut sequel. <laughs> yeah, man, for sure. If we if we can find some funders, you guys, you're ready to continue with the project, I guess, right? So... We have, we have a treatment. We have all of the materials, you know, um, we just, we would, we would just need a, uh, a solid financing option and a solid partner to work with. Okay. And any of the, uh, can you give us a little sneak peek, any of the actors and from the debut actually in this sequel? Oh yeah. Yeah. All, it'll be they're all, all the same one. cast nice. coming back. Yeah. Everybody, everybody would be, they're, they're all playing the same roles, just grown up now and, and, and getting married or, if it gets too, it might also possibly be a christening as well, too. We're not really sure. It could be even a trilogy, right? Where debut is a debut, debut two is a wedding, and debut three is a christening. You know, in this movie, Edwin he actually um, holds a Senate seat and has become the first Filipino senator to represent the Philippines. I'm just telling you what's happening in debut two, that my character... Right. There it is. And they're going to get married. Yeah, Der Derek was able to read that. Yeah, he saw he read. He read this is the sizzle. <laughs> oh, my hey, Joey. Oh, I see Joey on my. Joey Gila's in the house. Joey. Oh, Joey. Joey. Hey, you want to let him through? Let's... Where's Joey? Joey, jump in here. What's up, Joey? Yeah, Joey. Joey's in uh, Philippi the Fabulous Filipino Brothers and also... Yeah, Joey's in the Fabulous Filipino yeah. Brothers playing the character of Berto and uh, the Adelaide to Joey. Nice. And it's a little bit of adventure. Joey's working his ass off. Joey and every Filipino Brothers out there. Multi-talented. Um, <laughs> there he is. There he is. Ah! Yeah! What's up, Joey? You're on mute. You're on mute, Joey. You're on mute. You're on mute. Still on mute, brother. Hey, my, can you hear me? There you go. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there you was, go. oh man, my, my family. I, I had to get my rerun outfit for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joey, that's a nice that's a nice jacket, Joey. <laughs> oh, thank you, brother. Man, it's hella small. I told my girl, why you shrink this? Make me look the bar on TV. <laughs> man, good to see all your faces. Man. I like the uh, purple mood lighting in the back. You, you like that? Man, that's City Nights. That's City Nights in the background, brother. City Nights. This is like hick. This is like a light you get a hickey with. Right now, you get a hickey with this light right here. Man, Joey, I, I, just heard, I heard you just came back from Lucky Chances, man. You just came back. Man, I do. I still got I still got Patisse on my forearms, brother. That's <laughs> I, always, I love that's my favorite spot to eat, but I always think when I leave there, I'm like, man, my hat's more like tilapia. <laughs> Ain't that a poker spot? Lucky chances? Yeah, 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 yeah. Casino and restaurant. Casino yeah. restaurant in the foot. Oh in, my in god. The <laughs> camera is off. Oh, okay. oh okay. My, my, my mom was calling me in the other line. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> man, what's up, everyone? Man, so good to see everyone. John, look at John, man. Look at John. I haven't seen John. You were in this movie, were you, Joey? Were you in the debut? Man, I wish I was. I was so <laughs> jealous. <laughs> I said, man, you could have had me a broom. I could be Ilicano Turbo. I could have been Ilicano Turbo with a broom. <laughs> what, what did you see? <laughs> Joey, where did you see the debut at? <laughs> oh, where did I see that? Um, I think it was uh, in Daily City. Yeah, I think it was Daily City. Yeah. No, that, that was the bootleg yeah, in my house. That was that. Yeah, that, <laughs> no, no, sorry. Don't we don't talk about yeah. that. <laughs> the Daily City. Yeah. I was so excited, man, when I saw it, man. I I couldn't I couldn't believe it. 
I was just like, man. And then when I finally met all you guys in person, I was like tripping out. I was like, oh my gosh. I just wanted to like, who did I meet first? I think it was Bernadette. I think I met you first, Bern. Yeah. Yeah. And we yeah. And we did a bunch of shows together. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was all, I was like, oh my god, movie star, movie star. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. What was that? Remember when I brought you and Bernadette to Hawaii for the comedy? Yes. That yes. was crazy. <laughs> man, you said, I, uh, man, it was. <laughs> we were just talking about that over. That was a good. That trip. was awesome. That and was so fun. Kevin Camille was there. That's yes. right, brother. Love Kevin. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no, we got we got some inside jokes on it. It looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. no. oh, this on you guys, man. Dang. Man, I, man. Oh man. I feel like DJing, man. Look at that. All those records, bro. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, Joey, I, I got some Stevie B for you, man. What's up? Stevie you got B. Stevie B? You used to play that for me every time. Oh, my God. Thank you. You used to get me so hyped up for the shows, bro. Like, Ice would kill it before my show, and then I would dance for, like, 10 minutes with no jokes. They'd be like, uh, jokes? Can we get some jokes? I was like, no, Ice. Ice is still on. Ice. Oh, man. So good. Hey, man, my I, Bosco brother. I got some brother. cholo music for you, too, man. I got the cholo music. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the does Joey, if if it doesn't uh you know ruin anything, what does Joey play in Fabulous Filipino Brothers? Joey, who do you play? We'll let you answer that. Oh, oh okay. man. First, first of all, I was so excited because when I was a teenager, I used to hear about the Bosco brothers from one of my good friends, and he said, Man, these are my cousins, the Bosco brothers, man, they're they're good dancers. And they're, they're starting to do acting and stuff. I was a teenager at the time. And uh, so actually I play um, their real cousin, their godbrother in the movie. <laughs> and who is, who is, who was my uh, close friend growing up. So, and my, and, and he had passed, rest in peace, my, my good friend Berto and their godbrother. But yeah, I got, I got to play him. And I, I got so much of my, like my stilo and learning how to fight from their, their godbrother. Like me boxing now in my 50s because Birdo, man, I had to fight Birdo and Kaji Campbell. Oh my God. Like that, <laughs> he was a like monster. That. Yeah. <laughs> like Buck Yo, that, that was one of the reasons why we asked you to do it because you knew intimately the character that Dante put on paper, you know what I mean? Who was based oh, off of him. And you brought it, yeah. you brought it justice. When we watched it again today, right? And we were cracking Actually, up. what happened too is when, when, when we were writing it, it was during this, and then I went to shoot. Uh, Lumpia with a vengeance with you, Pat, and we were in that scene together at the high school, and and then we started reminiscing about Berto again, and and he started doing doing these things that these these mannerisms that our godbrother did all the time, and I was like Dante, he's got to play Berto. There's no one else who can play Berto because he's actually Berto, and and he has that personal connection. So that's and then that's how it all oh, came about. Man. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, thank you guys for having me, man. Oh man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that we were was just so talking fun, about man. Joey in our movie. Oh, no, he's, he's amazing. You gonna watch it yet, Joe? Oh, man, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate you guys, man. That was so you I, it, man. You, I you, got, you guys were amazing. I was I was rolling, I was I was dying. You guys are so good, oh, so thank good. You. Thanks thank for you. having me, man. I oh man, this is cool. By the way, you were great in the debut, too. You, you were man. Great. <laughs> You saw me in the back when the curtain like this. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> this is the day blue. Yes. I was so man. I want. No, I want to watch. I watch up. the movie. I did the warm up. I was the one who put up. the light bulbs in during the dance. I was putting the light bulb. Joey. Joey was one of the eighteen roses. I could have been the corn man or something. You guys should have put me in that. Man. <laughs> you guys. You could have been the natural. <laughs> I'd have been like this. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's so good to see. I haven't seen Joy in so long. In it, bro. Yeah, thank Patricia. Amen. Damn. Joy. Man. 
Good to see you, brother. Good Last time you. I saw you, man, you you brought all these movie stars at your brother's wedding. I was tripping out. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was bringing like big acts. I thought it was a reg. I thought it was a regular wedding. He started bringing out like like big acts during the wedding. I was like, oh man, coming up next, P Diddy. Did someone just come out? <laughs> <laughs> No, that was a fun night. That was a fun that night. That was so fun, brother. Man, you're you amazing, what, brother, uh, man. Joey, do you remember what E-Man said, though? Like, because Verman was asking him to bring some stars. Do you remember what E-Man said? E-Man said, oh E-Man said he was the star. Remember that, oh, E-Man? Yeah, he's nice. <laughs> <laughs> then, I started, then I started performing, and then the Far East Movement guys came out, and then Eric Bellinger came out, and the Baby Bash. And then I stopped everyone, and I said, no, then Mar Mariah Carey, come out now. And everyone looked, and it was a Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a good time. You killed it, though. So but jo good. Joey hosted uh, my brother DJ Verman's uh, wedding and wedding reception, and you know Joey oh, killed it. Shout out to Verman. Oh, no. Yeah, no, that was fun, man. Your, your mom had everyone dying. Oh, my oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah. Oh, your mom. Oh, my gosh. She, she was. She was. She killed Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> a fun fact i was supposed to be part of that wedding too i was supposed to be the dj actually but i had a prior engagement man but oh, yeah, i should dang. have been the dj that, that day oh man brother Ver Ver I man my, all, my good aldo shoes if you came <laughs> <laughs> oh man this is so cool today but 20 years i can't believe it 20 years. You guys all look the same, too. Let me look close. Hold on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. All you guys look the same. Yep. Joey, yeah, the, all last, you guys look the same. last time I saw you, Joey, was at 24 Hour Fitness. No like, way. That, ago, like 15 years ago. I don't know. It was a long time ago. That's the crazy. <laughs> the one in Santa Monica? Santa Monica. It was like 15. I was like, yeah. That was the last time I worked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> uh, those are those are pre-gout days those are my pre-gout days <laughs> oh man we're, we're getting some uh something in the chat where people are saying hey let's go watch the debut um again so for those who don't know or, who, or for those who haven't watched it or want to watch it again you can go to apple tv you go to Netflix, I believe Pluto, I think they have it there as well. And so we definitely want to go ahead and support everybody here because they've worked so hard on the film, the creatives, the cast. And as we go into the, the final five minutes over here, I just want to go around the table and uh, leave and have you guys leave with some parting thoughts on the debut of the experience and everything else. So who should we start with over here? Where the neon rainbow comes in. Yeah, there you go. We'll start with you, Joy. Go ahead. <laughs> um, well, for me, it was such an honor to be a part. Of. I know we've done a lot of panels in the past 20 years. We've, we've done a lot of, you know, talking to a lot of people in the community. And, you know, as much as it gave a voice or, like you said, it made you yourself see like what Arnell was saying, like you see yourself on screen. I very much like it very much affected me. So to have been like even a part of it was just like, I, I don't know, that was like dream, dream world. Because before that, I know I always say this and I always, I always talk about this, but prior to, I was just a kid from like San Diego, like Paradise Hill, San Diego. <clears throat> and Dante was like the first Filipino kid I seen on TV like and that was inspiring in itself so it as much it, to, to know that if I gave any girl or anybody from like my hood or anywhere around the way that was able to see the movie and be inspired like that's amazing to 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 do what Dante kind of did like inspired me to make me feel like hey dude I, I can, it gives you validation to see yourself. I mean, I think a lot of the kids nowadays, I mean, I don't know if it's true, but like they're able to see themselves 
more so, but back in like the 80s, 90s, you don't see that. And so I saw this kid on a soap opera and it was dope, you know, and it inspired me, made me feel like all is possible, right? And so to have been full circle, to have worked with him and his brothers and then all these wonderful people that um, Gene put together, it was such a blessing and forever thankful to have been a part of it. Thank you, Joy. Appreciate okay. you. <laughs> Uh, let's go to you, Bernadette. Uh, and kind of to reiterate, what, like what Joy is saying, the debut will always have a special place in my heart. Rose Mercado, like, is always going to be like inside me, and like whatever other projects that I do, I feel like that is. I did that for myself and the little girls that didn't have somebody that they could look at and that was brown. I mean, Lea Salonga in the Philippines and in theater, but like as in movies, I feel like that will always be something that I'm most proud of. So if I can say anything, support Filipino filmmakers and if we can do it, you can do it as well. Thank you. All right, what about the Bosco brothers? Let's go to the Bosco. Oh. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. I mean, look, it's a very special film, even talking about 20 years later, you know, we've all been blessed to work in the industry now for like 35 years, and, and we've been fortunate to work on a bunch of different projects, but being able to be a part of this project, repping our, our community, the Filipino community, and hopefully it just inspires, uh, we, I know it's inspired artists, before this, but I hope it continues to inspire all you artists out there to tell our story, to tell your story, and um, our story matters. It's just, Absolutely. it's really, it's, it's up there. I'm like Bernadette, and I'm like Joyce. Like this is really one yeah. of the, the most thing I'm most proud of being a part of my career. Yeah, sure. and I would just specifically want to, because I don't know that we do it enough, to really thank Eugene and thank you, John, for creating it. I mean, it's like you guys really made this thing happen. You know what I mean, like. We, 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 we're proud to be a part of it and our careers have gone on, but you guys really created a thing that's special 20 years later and it still holds up. We sat down at CAM Festival last year and watched it and I was like, damn, this movie, this movie stands up today. Like you could really, it's still good. Like you could release it today as a nineties, like a film, like a, a, throwback. a, a throwback type of film and it, it holds up. It's a good, it's a great movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the, even but even the themes now are not even dated. You know, yeah, no, it's, it's are, beautiful. It's relevant. great. It's now it's more great. than ever, you know. So I would just want to really give thanks to you guys because I don't think we do it enough. And uh, say, keep uh, we need your voice too. Keep working, like yeah, like come on, like let's do it. Well, let's do part two if you guys want to really do it. Let's come do your other stories. Like we need your voice out there, like for real. You know what I mean? Uh, the thing I really learned from this movie, and I know Joey can agree with me, is that. Um, Filipinos are sexy and you know I, I, I found out that I was sexy in this movie and you know they give me the dance scene I had two girls I, 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 Filipinos are sexy you know and, and it was about time the world found out that how, how sexy Filipinos are and uh, I'm glad that you, everyone, everyone is representing that sexiness today yeah. Yeah, you're a that movie. That's what I always think about with the day blue. <laughs> That's those a take wild one. parties. Those wild parties where you guys were dancing. You know who I'm pointing at. You, you, you. I know you know who I'm talking no to. Cheese mix. No cheese mix. No hey, You know, you know, Derek is sexy because he's the one that got all the all the kids out of you, brothers. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> be practicing all the time condoms <laughs> catholics they don't believe in that you know we do no it was i mean for me it was it was uh debut it's, it's always special to me uh i mean it was it, it was about you know community um first and foremost you know and then it gave a lot of filipino actors and actresses a time to shine and, and roles to play that you know weren't given to us with that much depth and character written to them, you know, you know, and, and still, I still, shit, I just auditioned for some of the day and a waiter. And this little name was called Waiter. Didn't even have a motherfucking name. 
But you know what? I'm a Filipino actor. I, I gotta, I, you gotta just audition for stuff. I might turn it down. But uh, if I get it, uh, he's giving you our actor. This is the actor's well, life. What is this actor's life? What do you mean? Like, you know, I wasn't going to ask the question. Like, we're going to tell people in the future about the movie. Like, but like, like the supporting let me see Marsha. Your parting words. Yeah, man, I was at the back. Later. Not about you. This is a long ass Zoom. I'm just gonna let you know. This is a long ass Zoom. You can edit yeah. this however you want. But okay, um, yes, it's about community, and you know, uh, <laughs> sexy. Listen, we had the premiere today. I can bring it on. <laughs> person with the the fans who, who, who've grown up watching the movie and showing it to the kids because I'd like to say hello gotcha. to them you know and talk to them and you know we have a voice write it produce it you know thank you Dionysia thank you and, and we'll audition for it <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. lie we're a waiter we're, this time we're, we're gonna audition right <laughs> <laughs> and hey, let's go to you straight offers, see, straight offers. <laughs> I love y'all out there. Everyone loves you too. Uh, let's go to you, Ice. <laughs> man, what can you I say after that, man? <laughs> These guys said it all right here. <laughs> all I got to say is Derek's sexy, man. That's all I got to say. <laughs> and Derek got the most kids out of all of us. So that, that's all I got to say. Still pimping, still pimping. <laughs> <laughs> all right e-man uh just gene and john thank you so much for for making this movie to bring this entire community together i got a chance to meet so many people and develop great relationships throughout the years and at the same time like i said you know it brought the community together not just here on on the movie or on the set but the filipino community in general and i just ask everyone there let's just continue to support each other and support our our own and, and let's take ourselves to the next level so thank you guys Thank you. Yeah, sure. All right. Patricio. Um, I mean, you know, the debut was the my film school. It was the the fire that still rages in me in terms of really trying to get uh more movies like this out there. So I, I everyone here, <clears throat> thank you. I mean, I was just a kid fresh out of USC film school when I started as an intern and and you know, meeting Dante on set, you know, inspiration, of course. I, I just it, it still blows my mind that I'm so close and we're close friends. Uh, my, my thanks to, of course, thank you, Gene and John. You made this all possible. Um, I want to thank also I mean, Dante and Joy. I mean, I met my wife, Melanie, on tour, and you you guys starred in my wedding video, and that means a lot. That, that The debut is always going to play a big part of it. And, um, and uh, yeah, Gene, you're the only reason why I, I went crazy and decided to do Lupio da Vinci. It took me seven years, and uh, you, you were there for me when I went crazy and kept me sane and and you guys were always there to support me and so I, I just I just want to say thank you to everyone here and while I have the, the floor I want to thank all the volunteers out there um, all the cities uh, for the two years where there I know you're out there I know you're watching um, and all the behind the scenes folks that weren't joining us tonight uh, I, I do want to thank you because you guys are all part of this and the volunteers always kept us uh, going during the whole the whole tour, right? They kept us uh, when it was ups and downs. So thanks. Thank you, Chicho. John? Um, yeah, my takeaway from everything is uh, I just met so many great friends, lifelong friends through this experience uh, from all the volunteers in all the cities and all the, the talent in front and back of the camera. Uh, it's been a, it was an amazing experience. And uh, yeah, I hope we can replicate this with a, a sequel or doesn't have to be through another awesome film. Um, I'd like to thank the brothers and all that, and Joy and Bernadette for their commitment to the film too, and Gene for his commitment. It was a, it was a crazy time. And uh, too bad we didn't have Twitter when this happened, right? Yeah, uh, right. I think even worse. Uh, anyway, we, still, we still have the email mailing list, though. We still have the mailing list. If we had Twitter, we had. 
A lot of AOL accounts on that mailing list. A lot of AOL emails. <laughs> 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 um, no, it was a it was a great time, and uh, hopefully we could we could do this again. I I really want Ice to rent out the Mayan. And <laughs> oh, man, when, when, the COVID, when COVID is over, when this is really over, I want a real fucking party. Invite hey. everybody. Amen. Ice DJ, maybe get Red in there too if we want Red. Red, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I want fucking a real party and get everybody dancing. Hey, sell tickets. Fifty dollars is gonna fund the movie. Uh, and I want, I want, I want Derek to show his sexiness. I'll be there. Yeah. I'll be there. And walk out with four girls. Yeah, I mean, this is fun, but I want a real freaking party. <laughs> this is all I want to do. I, I, that's my takeaway. I want a, a real fucking party after this shit. Hey, let's do it. And uh, oh, yeah. Joe, in years. What's up, Joey? And uh, yeah, take it away. I'm a little buzz right now. I've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we saw that black coffee cup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like also just to big up you because like, you know, like kind of to touch on what Darian said, like you guys created it and we were able to, like we acted in it and we promoted it, but you guys kind of still kept living it. And I know Gene like hustled and like, went through a lot too you know so that's years I, I remember the last time i saw eugene you were still hustling the the last of the of your your product of the shirts and and posters it's <laughs> 19 we still later. are it never ends it's so far like, can, can, can i say one more if you, guys, if you guys want if you guys want um there is still some shirts left over from hey. after the day. And if, if you yeah. want to get them, yeah. just go to uh, did, oh, go on eBay and look up debut merchandise. Just, just search for debut merchandise on eBay and you'll find it. Yeah, and also the DVD. I want the, the Derek well tank top. Too. That's right. <laughs> just the Derek tank, tank top. top. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I, honestly, I, I would love to just if, if I could just kind of bring it back to the to the filmmakers and to the other folks who are doing great work. Um, please check out the Bosco Brothers films when it film um, when it comes available to you. So the fabulous Filipino brothers, of course, the Street Show with uh, Olympia with a Vengeance. But there have been there have been quite a few great films that have come out. If you guys uh, are really interested in seeing what a, a lot of Filipino American filmmakers have done, uh, check out um, uh, Cavite, Neil Gamazan's movie, and Ian. Um, and then there's also uh, Riello Rose that just yeah, came Yellow out. Yeah, Riello Rose. There's just some great, great films coming out there. Flipside, can't forget Flipside, the very first Filipino American film to play at Sundance. Um, Disoriented, the very first Filipino American feature film ever made by Francisco Walla Wallace. Uh, there's a lot of really, really great stuff out there. So if you guys could please support, uh, if you could support all of those films the way you've supported ours, then more films will get made. And so we, we just, I, I, am, I feel so much gratitude and a debt to the community for coming out and supporting and, and giving back the love that we gave you guys. So thank you again so much, everybody. Thank you, Gene. Hey, you know what we should probably do? Gene, why don't you go put a GoFundMe out here so we can do the debut too. <laughs> I'm sure that's going to catch the fire, bro. Might as well start. So honestly, the, the reason why I don't push harder these days to um, to make more movies is, is, is just simple economics. I'm, I'm a single dad with two grown children and keeping them in college and paying the bills and stuff. And so that's, that's what focus, that's what I focus on these days. Um, if the funding ever came through for debut two or another picture, I've got screenplays piled up, you know, so, but it's just, it's unfortunate for me right now. I really do have to focus on being a dad and making sure that I have that foundation for my family. Um, but you know, if, if that opportunity ever were to come up, you know, we got a great idea for debut two and we got another one for debut three and, uh, there's a lot of great stories to be told out there and, and a lot of great people, as you can see on this Zoom, really talented, dedicated, amazing people to make this art happen with. And Neil, uh, Lyle, everybody here at Phil Am, I, you know, if it wasn't for you guys and the work that people, that, that people like you guys do, this movie never would have been seen. So it, it, this really is a give and take. The, there's, the credit goes all around for making this movie what it was. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, John. Go ahead. Yeah, please support the fabulous Filipino brothers and Olympia too when it comes out. Um, you know, if they become multi-millionaire producers, you know, that's 
all good for us. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. uh, use, the, yeah. use those stimulus <laughs> checks. Winston, who can't be here. I don't know if he's watching, but his brother passed away. Rest in peace. Uh, he, he, I brought up the idea with him of doing maybe a live reading of the debut, maybe when this pandemic is over. I think that'd be dope as a fundraiser for Finland Arts. I don't know if you got to be into it because we love working for free, right? Anyways. Fundraiser, <laughs> 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 fundraiser, you know, good for, it's for the people, you know, but what I mean, do a live reading and we can have ice and Ema actually spin <laughs> for the live reading. Um, that'd be, and then we can have Arnell actually dance, right? That'd be dope. <laughs> Um, but oh, yeah, yeah let's do it. not as a Zoom live reading, but I feel like in real. Can can we do the live reading in Montebello in the in the gym? Because I live literally like blocks away from that. But yeah, and that's my two cents. But yeah, please support all the future shit that's coming out uh, with uh, Patricia's and Dante's and the brothers' films. Yeah, the no more we, more success, we just pass it down and pass it forward and all that good stuff. Next. Derek Carl about to drop his stimulus check if you do that. All right, I see you, Derek. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so uh, I know we went over time a little bit, but this was a, a huge celebration. As you know, it's touched, and we've talked about this countless Filipino American lives and beyond here in the United States and even in the Philippines. You guys had some viewers over there. So, chat room, people who are watching on Facebook Live. Let's support this film. Let's rewatch it again. And let's put together some things over here so we can get funding for the debut two and possibly three, right? Because we want to see more of this. Everything's already written out. They're ready to go. You're going to see these actors and actresses again. And we definitely want to continue to support our Filipino American people. Thank you so much. Thank you guys thanks, so much. Thanks, Neil, for hosting. Neil, thanks for hosting. Thank you guys. Man. Love you guys. Guys. Hey, I miss you guys. Love you, you guys. Love Round of applause for the debut oh, cast and crew, everybody. See you guys soon. Yeah. Can I be in debut too? I want to be the Nilaga chef. Nilaga yeah, chef. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.